Hello, everybody, and welcome to our D&D Adventures League stream, Storm King's Thunder. I am John, the executive producer here at Final Show Films and Game Master for today. And with me today are William. Hi, I'm William, and I'm playing Fire and Altarian, human paladin of Ilmater. And Jeremy. Hello, I'm Jeremy. I am playing Kinvar Erasime, the elven wizard. And our special guests, the folks over at Cognitive Merch, Thea and Grebo. Hello! Hey guys. Uh, I'm Grebo. I'm going to be playing Flint, a dwarven barbarian. Uh, really hates orcs and goblins and got a bit of a temper on him. Uh, hi, I'm uh, B. I'm going to be playing Milva today. Uh, and I'm a halfling rogue. And looking for the loot. <laughs> looking for the loot. All right. So, uh, uh, next week we'll have a couple more people joining us. We were going to have uh, our normal our normal guest, Aaron, uh, coming in, but uh, they have an issue with their flight today, so they're not going to make it. And we have one other person that will be joining us next week. So, we begin in the land of Faerun, along the high road stretching north out of Waterdeep. I think it's north out of Waterdeep, or south out of Waterdeep, but somewhere out of Waterdeep. Um, <clears throat> our adventurers have been traveling along the high road for days. As evening approaches, they spot a wooden signpost next to a trail that heads north into the hills. Nailed into the post are three arrow-shaped signs. The two, marked Waterdeep and Daggerford, fall, follow the high road but point in opposite directions. The third, marked Nightstone, beckons them to follow the trail. And if memory serves, Nightstone is roughly ten miles up the trail. So, our adventurers are setting out uh, for adventure, obviously, heading to the town of Nightstone in the, uh, in the land of Faerun. And they're heading there for a variety of reasons. Well, primarily two reasons right now. Three of them, as someone yells in their phone, someone's phone yells, uh, <laughs> silence your cell phones, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, three of them, uh, Flint, Milva, and uh, I'm going to mispronounce the name every time. Kinvalar. Kinvalar, you Kinvalar. got it right. Hey, I got it right. Uh, uh, are there to hunt down some goblins. The uh, the high stewardess of Nightstone, Lady Velrosa Nandar, who is a Water Davian noble, uh, has put out a call for adventurers to deal with a goblin problem in the area. And these three have answered that call. Uh, Fyron, on the other hand, is there to deal with a slightly different problem, although he probably will end up helping with the first one, too, as things go. Um, the... Uh, <laughs> The, uh, to, the, to the north of Nightstone is the Ardeep Forest, and the wood elf inhabitants there have a bit of a problem with the, Nights, with the folks of Nightstone, primarily because they are always going in there and hunting their stuff. So uh, Lady, uh, Lady Nandar has sent out a call also for uh, mediators and negotiators to help deal with the white, uh, to, white elves, wood elves. I mean, you know, whatever. Um... But, uh, so, uh, they were joined, they were traveling with a caravan that had a few other people on it, uh, as well as some, some goods for trade, but, uh, the caravan threw an axle, and they left, the, the, the four of them went on ahead just to make sure Nightstone knows they're coming, and, you know, to, to make sure everything's okay, uh, leaving behind a few of the other guards and adventurers that were coming up along. So, it's just the four of you riding ahead, or walking ahead, as the case may be, um, mm -hmm. And in the distance, you see the village of Nightstone. Um, Nightstone. So uh, Nightstone sits around, uh, sits it's sort of in the middle of the Ardeep River, which flows from the forest. Um, you can sort of see it in the distance. There's this. You see these large wooden palisades uh, of the walls surrounding it, and this even slightly larger hill atop which sits a keep uh, that Lady Nandar uh, lives in, along with her guards and other noble and her members of the family. Um, you see it in the distance, and something doesn't. Something feels a little not quite right. Want everybody to roll me perception checks, please? Okay. Uh, and for for uh, our, our guests, if you look on your character sheets. Um, <laughs> You have a, uh, in the skills tab, if you just click the word perception, it'll roll for you automatically in the, in roll 20. I'm, don't worry, I'm right I, there behind you. I am off to my usual start. So, uh, I'm right there with you, man. Kinvalar Kin rolls a one, which gives him a two for his perception check. I roll a two, which gets me a five. Uh, 
Um, we've got our character sheets in front of us and dice. Can we just roll regular dice? Or well, we're gonna roll them. We're gonna roll, yeah, we're gonna roll them in roll twenty just so we can okay. see everything going on. Uh, so if you look on your character sheets uh, in 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 the roll twenty journal, and sort of uh, down the skills, you'll see a list of them, and they're all toggleable. So if you click on on whatever skill you want to roll, it'll roll it in roll twenty four. It's just being very slow. That's fine. And if it's and if it looks like it's not going to cooperate, go ahead and roll your real dice, and we'll just we'll we'll figure it out later. <laughs> oh, there it went. Am I yep. Have... yep, there it went. Yep. Oh, I need to I need to fix your character sheets real quick, but I see it. Uh, yeah. It's uh, just it's yeah it's 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 set to always roll advantage. I, I'll, I'm fixing that for you right now. But you have rolled it. Uh, um. Do 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 do. That one's fixed. Are both there. your are both your perception scores the same or does? Hey, it's fine. Okay. Flint have a slightly different one. So, I'm just gonna take it like that. Uh, All right. So uh, I I. Flint has a lower perception score. <laughs> I'll go ahead. Sorry, right, I'm pretty certain. I'm pretty certain that that Milva. It doesn't, has it doesn't matter because Milva, something. Milva's keen ears, uh, hear the tolling of a bell in the distance. This just this long distant thum, 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 coming from the town. Okay. Can I can I recognize what what it is? Uh, you're not one. Hundred percent certain. Let's roll a um. Let's roll a history check. History. Uh, are you editing my? There yep. it is. Hey, ah, fourteen. There you go. Uh, so with a fourteen, uh, you th th it faintly sounds like a temple bell. Like there, there is a distinct difference between alarm bells and temple bells and other types of bells. And and being a rogue, you're a little bit more familiar with alarm bells than uh than yeah. uh, than other types. But uh, this distinctly sounds like a temple bell, although it's not. There's no rhythm to it. It's just ding, 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 ding. It just sounds like somebody's just randomly yanking the pull cord. Okay. Guys, I think something's not right. <laughs> oh. Oh. We should be on our guard. How far How far away are we from the, the place? You're, you're within sight of it, but you're still quite a ways off. It's going to be... Uh, the sun is starting to dip. It's going to be closer to dusk as you guys arrive. Okay. Well, perhaps we should pick up the pace as it were. Yeah. All right. And you continue on. And I'm going to move you guys up. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, my uh, like guys know my character sheet seems to have gone a bit crazy. All right, uh, it seems to reset itself. Well, we're gonna go ahead. Just go ahead and use your dice for now, and we'll fix that for cool. next week. Um, okay. We'll go ahead and just use that. So, uh, you guys find yourselves uh, approaching Nightstone. Uh, after following the trail for 10 miles, now you all hear the ringing of a bell. Ding, ding, ding. It's getting louder the closer you get uh, the closer you get to Nightstone. And now that you're a little bit closer, you're starting to see a bit of details. Uh, the river, as I said previously, flows around it, forming a moat. And the village itself is contained within a wooden palisade, beyond which you can see a windmill, a tall steeple, and the high-pitched rooftops of several other buildings. Apart from the ring of the bell, there's not really anything else happening. You'd expect to have some guards at the gate or at the drawbridge, but you don't see anybody on the wall. Um, and as the trail comes to an end, you see a lowered drawbridge spanning the moat in front of you. Beyond the drawbridge, there are two stone watchtowers that sort of stand as part of the palisade. and But nobody is on them or in them. You can see a little bit through the arrow slits. You don't see anybody standing guard. Um... And then, obviously, immediately to the south of the of the village itself, you see the keep rising tall. Uh, I want everybody to roll me another perception check. Okay. Uh, 
<laughs> I got a one. <laughs> Flint sees nothing. I got a total three. <laughs> Sixteen. Like, he's busy checking out. He's patting on his own kilt. Yeah. Uh, two of Milva rolls. Twenty. There you go. Uh, so uh, Milva's sharp eyes and fire. Now that he now that he's been sort of tweaked that something's going wrong, <clears throat> the two of you look towards the keep and you notice that part of the keep seems to have collapsed. Like you you would expect, you know, your standard four towers and, and walls, but one of those towers has actually fallen over in on itself. As if it was this hit is not by something. Good. And you guys are at sort of approaching the drawbridge, which is down. Uh are we can we can can I see anybody, like any movement or anything like that?
apparently, apparently we lost audio uh, when I swapped over here because I hadn't turned the audio on. So for the past like 10 minutes, they haven't heard anything. But trust me, it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we got murdered by a warg. <laughs> to, 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 yeah. to bring everybody back on speed, that's thanks to technical issues. Um, Flint didn't hit any of the wargs at all. Uh, almost hit Quinvalar, but didn't. Uh, Quinvalar roasted a warg in one hit. Uh, yep. And then he and Firen sort of uh, uh, harried down the other warg until it died. And Milva shot Flint in the back because he kept knocking her arrows out of the air. Um, <laughs> Not purposefully. You've made that sound purposeful. As far as you know. Uh, <laughs> um, and then uh, they 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 sort of they found a couple of healing potions on uh, the so. Flint started kicking the warg, and it coughed up some... The dead warg, and it coughed up a couple healing potions uh, that it had apparently swallowed from somewhere. Uh, and then um, <clears throat> Milva and Quinvalar went to look at the temple right next to them, uh, which was the, the, the this, this building right here for you guys watching at home. Um, and uh, as they did that, Fire uh, and uh, healed... Uh, fire and uh, healed uh, Flint back up to 11 because Flint had been dropped down to 2 and then he drank a healing potion. And he's back up almost to whole fighting strength now and Quinvalar looked up and saw a temple in the bell and said, oh, pretty bell. I wish it would stop ringing. Yes. Um, <laughs> Milva, on the other hand, your keen eyes see a small green form swinging back and forth underneath the bell like <laughs> attached to the rope and you hear <laughs> As... I told you somebody swinging on it. Oh yeah. dear. Can I can I uh, see it clearly? It looks like a goblin. Shoot it oh, off the shoot. bell. Shoot, shoot it off it. the bell. You gonna try shoot it? All right, roll yeah. attack. Oh wow! Please, please, please. Yeah, there we go. That's better. 17, <laughs> you're shooting up, he's sort of slinging on the bell. Let me see Kill that his, goblin. Let me see what his AC is. Uh-huh. Uh, so many things I have to put. Just uh, for, for, your, for the edification of everybody watching at home, when I, uh, normally on Roll20, you, you sort of create characters as you go. For pre-established things right here, they just have a list that has entries for everything, and it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, that that's gonna hit. So roll your damage. Excellent. Five. So you you sort of see him. <laughs> and you, you you sort of you sort of hear this goblin squeak and hit the ground, and the bell stops swinging. Finally, uh, and you 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 now you hear sort of a ruckus happening inside. Okay. Uh, I would approach with caution. You so, first. <laughs> I, I will. I, after after I hear the, the the bell stop ringing, I look over at Flint. Uh, well, it looks like they've uh, found something in the tower and maybe cleared out some of our noise. Let's go see what they found. Like, yeah, I don't know where they're at. Maybe I can get a drum of whiskey in there, or at least something to fucking kill. And I just stomp off like in a proper bad mood. <laughs> all right so let's get you guys over to the temple real quick as yep. you come in uh i have to just add. so how are you guys entering the temple um uh, i would like to lead the way if no one objects as the yeah, one unless, with, health with armor and a shield unless otherwise <laughs> told flint would just burst through the door <laughs> Yeah, but he will listen to the party, possibly. I I would stick at the back most likely, unless there's I'm I'm actually mean there's nothing on the door, no traps or anything like that, because you know goblins are inside, so or some sort of something. Um, where did Quinvalar's token go? Uh it's still back in town. Quinvalar's token didn't move. Why can't I see it? Hmm. It's. That's weird. Oh, there it is. Found it. <laughs> There's so many things in Roll20 right now that it gets confused. Well, hang on. Getting but you over did, there. 
is the, are are these lighting effects from like pre-existing in the map? Because yep. they're kind of yeah, making it hard to see. <laughs> they are indeed pre-existing in the map. Bring everybody's attention over to here. Oh, there we go. There you go. All right, so. Yeah, Flint, you burst in the door, followed closely by Fyron, Quinvalar, and I'm assuming Milva's actually being the cautious one and coming a little bit further behind. She is indeed. Yeah. Milva's, Milva's, Milva's the one that has sense. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, you burst into this temple area and you hear <laughs> happening just beyond this door over here. Right. Do I do I recognize the language? It's goblin. Oh, oh that was good. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Flynn sees that door and he just shouts, uh, "Who do I have to kill for a drink round here?" And I charge straight at the door. He's heard goblins. They're his most hated enemy. He's yeah. going for it. Flint, so- wait. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so Flint just barrels through that door. Make me a strength check, Flint, with advantage because you are angry and running. I'm chasing after him, trying to make sure he doesn't get himself killed again. Uh, that is 21. All right. Uh, so you slam through that door, and there was a goblin on the other side of it. <laughs> <laughs> but awesome. you just hear a sound. <laughs> As you slam through this door, and blood sprays from behind the door. <laughs> as these two goblins, well, as one goblin that was there is no longer there. Uh, and you see yourself, you see looking in, um, uh, grab Flint. There we go. Uh, so yeah, you, you just squish a goblin that That's has, me. that has an arrow sticking out of him. Sorry. Wrong one. Roll 20 is being fidgety. Uh, yeah, I'm chasing after it, but I'm not quite there yet. You sort of, you squished a goblin that has an arrow sticking out of him against the wall, <laughs> and then there's another goblin sort of looking at you from the other side. <laughs> and yeah, just, just very I, I confused. Go straight in for the kill. Make me an attack. Come on, please hit something. <laughs> Yes, twenty-four. All right, yeah, you, you. Now there's, now there's a goblin. Oh, it's killing time. You swing that <laughs> axe. Roll me some damage. Fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah, you, you. So the goblin's looking at you, and the head doesn't move. <laughs> Primarily because you lodged the axe through its neck into the wall it was standing next to. And so the head is sort of sitting on top of the axe as the body drops. Head, so the axe head and the body. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, so now you've got a goblin head on your axe, and cool. a goblin body yeah. collapsing down to the ground. Uh, as a like an interact with the environment straight after that, uh, I'd like to I take one hand off my axe yeah. and I poke my finger in the neck, sure. give it a wiggle, and then on the wall behind him, I like finger paint a smiley face <laughs> so firing as you as you walk into the room firing and you see the squished remains of one goblin behind the door and the uh and and you see flit doing just making a smiley face in the blood of this goblin whose head is still sitting on his axe that is still embedded in the wall i i feel like that is a little excessive flit but and at that point, well when he says that, when he says that, I then rub out one eye. <laughs> <laughs> that I, just, just remember, this is a temple that people like would like to come back to at some point. Uh, is there anything else in this room with the goblin corpses? Make a perception check. I'm following calmly behind. Uh, yeah, eventually all f- eventually all four of you end up in that room, and, and the other three, the other two have seen what what Flint has 15. done. <clears throat> right. Uh, so yeah, you see there are a pair of bags. They're, lo- they're sort of like a pair of uh, of uh, of like leather bags on the ground that look like they've been loaded with stuff and tied up. Uh, it looks like goblin loot sacks, basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. I open one of them up and see what's inside. 
Alright, so the first one contains three blocks of incense. Uh, a silver holy symbol shaped like a unicorn's head, which is you know is Mielecki's uh, symbol. Uh, and uh, uh, a, cup, a pair of shoes. Four socks, uh, only two of which match. Um, <laughs> and a book that looks like it's had all of its pages torn out, so it's just really the spine and the cover. Um, and what it, at, at first glance looks like it's probably some sort of toilet paper holder. You're not certain. <laughs> toilet paper holder. I feel at first glance, I that's the thing that stands out as odd to me, and I don't know why. Uh, of all that, that's the only yeah, thing that feels odd. I know, right? The other sack uh, holds three empty glass vials. Um and a uh, and what looks like it was the the poor box, uh, so the, the collection box for the temple, and it's unlocked. And inside, you see thirty-seven copper pieces and fifteen silver pieces. All right. Um, the alms box needs to go back to the temple. So, um, actually, most of the stuff needs to go back to the temple. Honestly, not a lot of it's useful to us. I'm gonna take a look at the book with the pages torn out does it have a title or anything yes. on the inside cover or yes, anything it, it, like it does that. indeed have a title uh the title says uh the the title said the title says uh of kobolds and men um <laughs> and on the inside is an author credit that says nilk the unflappable <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Interesting. Keep Not an author I know, um, but the handwriting is very odd. Eh. Um, but okay. Well, I thought that might be something that's why. Maybe there was something in the in the in the margins that have required it being torn out. But I'll make an not very useful check. at the moment. Yes. Make an investigation check. Okay. Uh, that would be a 23. There's nothing, there was nothing hidden in the spine, but it looks like the goblins may have thought there was something hidden in the spine. Ah. Uh, You're pretty certain that the goblins didn't believe this was written by an actual kobold, or that it was written about kobolds. Then again, goblins can't read common, so you're not sure what they thought it was. Right. Well, there there's not much else? here. Is there anything else in this room? Uh, no, it looks like it's been pretty thoroughly trashed, and you see the uh, and you see there is just the the knotted rope that leads up to the bell uh, that they were playing on. Um, no other doors. Oh, uh, there's, uh, there's a couple of windows that look that look back out onto the town square, and then a door that heads back out into the temple, which has stairs that then go up to the steeple where the bell is. Um, that's pretty. Much, it's a it's a fairly it's a fairly small and not very. Uh, prosperous temple uh pretty it looks like everything that they could find in the building was in those two bags all right um hmm? uh milva uh i think we found everything in here that there was to find i would i would carry on searching this the city itself yes it, i'm we, there do, at the very least, there does not seem to be anybody else here calling for aid, and I'm sure there are people in distress elsewhere. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, on the way out, I will leave the holy symbol and the alms box on the altar and just, like, leave the sacks where they are. Just try and put a little bit of stuff back into order, but the sacks can be dealt with later. Okay. Does anybody else do anything on the way out? Nope. Just keep an alert. All right. Since my perception has been allowing me to be so alert lately. <laughs> I think I've literally rolled a one, a two, and then a three. All right. Uh, you guys come out, and as you exit, I want everybody to roll me some perception checks again. Well, here's that four coming for you. Yep. Let's see here. I have a 16. Um... <laughs> Hi, seventeen total. What 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 flint? I got eleven. 
All right. So everyone except Milva, the the ring, the, the 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 temple bell has been ringing for so long, and you got used to hearing things underneath it. Now that it's gone, there's you still have this ringing in your ears, and you're just trying to, you're you're just trying to unclog your ears. Everyone else I'm though. To ring the bell again. Yeah. Uh, everyone else though, you sort of you hear this uh, from across the building immediately in front of you. Uh, you hear this sound of. Uh, it, there are. It sounds kind of like chicken squawking. Um, and then on top of that, you just hear. <laughs> and for those of you that speak goblin, you hear. Get the chicken! Get it! Get it! I want to eat it! I want to eat it! <laughs> Does anybody want to do anything before Flint runs after <laughs> both the goblin and the chicken? I don't. Sp- I don't speak Already goblin, so go. I'm just moving speak... in the direction of I don't where speak, that is. I don't speak goblin, but I know what Flint's going to do, so I'm trying to get there ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Fyron and Flint both take off in a run. I'm also <laughs> heading that way too. Are you running or walking? Um, I'm probably running. All right, so assuming that all four of you have decided to start running when one of you started running, uh, <clears throat> you all round the corner at roughly the same pace, because Flint, Flint moves slowly normally, but there's goblins to be killed. Right. Um, and you see over here, uh, inside uh, what looks like a farm, what looks like it was a chicken, uh, sort of like a, an animal coop that has been busted and the fence has been knocked down. You see a pair of goblins running around in circles chasing this one chicken that will not stop. And they're not smart enough to think to go the opposite direction and sort of pincer move it. So they're basically, the two goblins are basically fighting each other to chase after this one chicken. And they're just, it's just running them around in circles. And he's... Okay. <laughs> It's a very, it, it, it's a very silly sight. So, um, yeah, keep rushing up at it. All right. I need to get to a certain distance before my one offensive cantrip I've got. Right. So we're going to go ahead and roll Too initiative sure. again. Uh, they are surprised because they're not focusing on you guys at all. So let's see which one of you gets to them first. I got a nine. Uh, 20. I also have a nine. I th- I'm pretty certain that um, Flint's dex is higher than mine. Uh, at a six, at a thirteen. Yeah, my dex is nine. <laughs> There's yeah. a reason I'm always going last. <laughs> so I didn't, I did not click on my, but That's yeah, fine. twenty. What'd you get? You got a twenty. Yep. All right, so Milva, you are going to go first. Lovely. Uh, so yeah, you, you 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 know that this is about to get really crowded and out of control in a second, um, and you also notice that the the goblins have not noticed you guys yet. Okay, um, I'm just going to come up a little bit closer and shoot. Right. Um, yeah, I want to go like next to this boulder over here. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh, I can't. So, do I get an advantage to hit? Um, they're not paying attention to you, and they're chasing a gobble, and they're chasing a chicken. So, yes, you do get advantage on this particular roll. Perfect. So, I'm going to use my short bow. Hmm? Sneak attack. Sneak hey. attack. Twenty-two hits. Go and roll your damage, and you do get sneak attack damage. Uh, yeah. Okay. How do I my How do I add my sneak attack? Sorry. Uh, so what's your what, How much damage is your sneak attack? Uh, 1d6. So in the chat box, type slash roll 1d6. All together? Uh, space between roll and 1d6. Lovely. Yeah. So yeah, you you sort of looking at him and you, you're aiming at, I'm assuming you're going to aim at the one that's behind right now? Yeah. Yeah, so you watch them roll around in a circle for a second. And this arrow... Whoosh, flies and just gets through the neck of one of the goblins and it doesn't even make a squeak. It just <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. The other one doesn't seem to have noticed yet. Quinvalar. Alright, I am going to, let's see, 30, I don't need to get so move up here first. That's still not 
Uh, so that's 20. Can I, is hopping that fence going to be difficult? Uh, it's kind of broken and like the bits of it are hanging loose, so it won't support your weight. So yes. Okay. So that would be 30 and not quite close enough. So I will just chuck my, one of my daggers at it. Uh, 24. 24 hits. Roll damage. Five piercing damage. All right, so the goblin, now that it's not being impeded by the other one, has managed to grab the chicken and shove it into a sack. And as it grabs, as it shoves the chicken into a sack, this dagger <laughs> hits it in the back of the neck. And it sort of, it's not dead, as it turns around and sort of looks and it suddenly has this realization of the fact that it's friend, buddy is dead, and that there's like four adventurers bearing down on him and he still doesn't get his turn though because he was surprised so it is a, F a flint's turn cool uh i will run as far as i as close as i can to it within my 30 within my 25 foot all right there you get just to the fence and uh i will i will throw a hand axe at it all right. So roll your hand axe throwing. <laughs> Ten. To hit? Yes. Uh, you run up and you see Quinvalar throw that dagger and you're like, oh, I can do that too. And, <laughs> and the axe goes, thunk, and lands actually pretty accurately in the log right next to the goblin. <laughs> Um, like it, it, yeah, yeah, it, it was a warning shot. That's exactly what I was aiming for. It, it actually, it looks kind of like the stereotypical look, like when when a farmer beds their axe in into a tree trunk. It looks like that, but it's a hand axe, so it's a little bit smaller. So um, mm -hmm. it's actually very, very, very nicely thrown, just not at the goblin. You missed uh, with style. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, they don't know that. They don't know that. Fire. <laughs> All right. Um. All right, yeah. So I'm going to step up to here because I can't quite get into melee range. I'm just going to hurl my one of my two javelins at it. All right, make the attack. Here's the third thing flying through the air. <laughs> 20 hits. 20! <laughs> Six piercing. So, it, so it, it opens its mouth to start screaming. Like, you get the feeling it's about to start screaming for help. And as it opens its mouth, a javelin inserts through the mouth and out the back of the head. And shoo! And it just <laughs> pins it to the ground behind it. Awesome. <laughs> and it's dead. Go retrieve my javelin. Yep. There Go is grab a, my dagger. There are a pair of sacks on the ground. One of them is one of them looks like it has a struggling chicken in it. I open. Up I will the let the chicken, chicken go. go. <laughs> it hops out and starts running away. I jump on the stump of wood. And start trying to pull my hand axe out. Give me a strength check. Okay. Oh, yeah, this will go well. <laughs> oh, yeah, twenty-one. Yeah. Okay. You, boom, pop it out, nice and easy. Retrieve uh, my javelin from the goblin. Yep. Uh, so yeah, in on the floor here on the ground, there are a pair of sacks. All right, I will grab one of them and. So in the open it up, see what is inside. All right, so the one that had the chicken in it um, yes. has a... Uh, sorry, I'm going to pull it up here. Uh, has a, a, um, a hand in it, as well as it previously had a chicken. Has what looks like a human hand that's been cut off at the wrist and has a gold ring on it. Um, looks like the gold ring might be particularly valuable. Uh, do I recognize? Is that like a signet ring? Like it looks like a family ring. Not not. Does it have the, Does it have like a symbol that I recognize? No, it's not. It's not engraved with anything. It's just a nice, a really nice gold ring. All right, so it's like a wedding band. Yeah, kinda? kind of like a wedding band or a family band, something like that. Hmm. Um, and uh, uh, the other the other pouch just has five coppers in it. Well, uh, I mean, the coppers would be nice, but I know something would feel wrong about. I don't 
don't think at, it will feel wrong. Just take the, the ring. At, at, at the very least, um, we should try and see that ring back to its family. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, and let's just give it back. Hold, I mean, assuming on. that the family is around, you know. Uh, hold on to the coppers, and if we can't find their owners, then feel free. Maybe, maybe they would prefer the hand rather than the ring. I feel like the hand would be a bit painful. Ah. Can I... Can Flint just, like, just stump up and intercede a bit? Takes the hand, takes the ring off, throws the ring in the air for whoever wants to catch it. Uh, I like to catch it. <laughs> moves off to one side and then starts taking the mickey out of posh noble people by shaking hands with it all... Oh, hello, how do you do? Oh, how are you doing? Oh, 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 oh. And he's just off in a little world of his own, just taking the mickey. Sounds good. Um, Fire and catches the ring. Well, and so so who, who all wants to catch the ring? Uh, not not Kinvalar. Uh, I think well, it was just on a disembodied does, hand. Does, does Milva want to catch the ring? Yes, please. All right, I need Fire and Milva both to roll a dexterity check. Oh, well, <laughs> it's going to go. Badly for Fyron. Uh, it's not safe, is it? Uh, no, Six. just 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 click on the dexterity attribute. <clears throat> uh, it's not letting me click on it. Uh, just roll oh, it. there you go. Got it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sixteen. So yeah, Fyron, you reach up to grab the ring, and then you look in your hand, and it's not there. Yeah. Oh, the sun must have gotten in your eyes. Milva, meanwhile, you just sort of... <laughs> and just hold open your pouch underneath him as it falls past his hand into your pouch. Can I try and do it stealthily? <laughs> do you want to? Yeah. Roll stealth check. I slide of hand, I think, actually. Uh, no, stealth. Okay. It's, not, it's just catching it. Like the, Yeah, no, you... You walk past Firen, open it up while he's staring up and Quinvalar is looking at Flint. Uh, yes. Open up the pouch... Let it drop in, close the pouch up, and make sure that you're a good distance away before Firen looks yeah, back down. Yeah, back where I was next to the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Firen, you, you, you must have missed it, and you start to look down, and you don't see it on the ground anywhere. You're not sure where it went. It's like where you like flip a quarter and lose track of it halfway down, yeah. and you can't find it again. Yeah. <sighs> well, as you look over at Flint, he's now slapping himself across the face with the hand. <laughs> Flint, could you please not disrespect the dead like that? <laughs> They've already, They've already says, suffered enough. He says he not disrespect them. He then holds their hand out and goes like, "Oh, I am sorry," and, and gives the hand a little kiss, uh, and then he just throws it back towards the sack. <laughs> All right. And at this point, I need everybody to make perception checks. Okay. Because the hand is actually alive and it starts choking Flint. That's a 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a crawling claw and it starts choking oh, it out. Just, just... It 21. turns around. Animate as always. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you all sort of see a pair of goblins poking their noses around the corner at you because you've been making a bit of a ruckus. Uh, and they have sort of come down from their various places where they were hiding. Uh, and we're sort of seeing what was happening. Also, they, they, they stopped hearing the other two fighting over the chickens. Um, and so over here, you see these two goblins look. And then they immediately start running the other direction, screaming in goblin. Can I try and shoot one? Oh, wonderful. Sure. Um... Now I'm gonna try to. Uh, so 15 just misses. So you and and it, it sort of like glances off one of the leather shields that these goblins are carrying. Just it's like sort of waving its arms wildly while running away. I'll have to go at uh, throwing in the the hand axe that's already in my hand. Sure. Uh, that's 19. That'll hit. Roll damage. Oh, G6. Oh, four. Uh, so yeah, the hand axe <clears throat> embeds in the back of the goblin, but it keeps running. So 
I'm going to run over here. That puts me in 15 feet. And I am going to cast Lightning Lure. All right. So DC 13 strength save, save, or it takes 10 or or 8 lightning damage and is pulled 10 feet towards me. Well, uh, it rolled a 1, a natural 1, and it has a minus 1 to its strength, so it rolled a 0. Nice. Um, And as so you just whip out with your hand and this electrical whip just and wraps around it. And uh, the goblin actually dies midway, about five feet towards you. Uh, it still finishes the full ten feet of movement, right? Uh, but it 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 hits the ground and and just is smoked as the other one continues running away. <laughs> and again, I think one of you speaks goblin, or do two of you speak goblin? I, speak I do goblin. not. I think Flint's the only one that speaks goblin here. Uh, Flint, you hear it going, <laughs> adventurers, people with swords and magic, <laughs> as it's running. <laughs> South. I speak orcish, not goblin. Yeah. Yes, same here. So yeah, it is running south and taking off at a full run. Flynn looks round uh, to see whether we should just run after it. Uh, and- Fyron's Fy- like pinching the bridge of his nose like, oh, oh no. We should stop it. Yes, yes, we should. We should make sure it's not going for reinforcements. To try, try and shoot at, at this one again? Are we able to move, move up closer and well, it's, attack again? It's, it's out of your sight now. Okay. And try and <clears> hop <throat> the fence. And... Hop the fence, yeah. And... Alright, so yeah, as you guys hop over that fence, go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll move you. And come around the corner, you see it in the distance, uh, still running and screaming. Oh dear. And it's moving pretty quick. Uh, and as Damn it's dashes. as it's moving, uh, you see uh, other goblins appear to have come out of the woodwork and are heading towards it, sort of to see what's going on. Oh, bloody! Hell. Well, try yeah, shoot. They either flee now or fight us, and hopefully we kill them. We either fight here or we try and get into a building and and fight them through that. Let's see where they're at. And let's go ahead. Yeah, let's see how many we end up having to deal with. Boop. I don't get access to spells until level two, so I am now. I am now basically a worse fighter. I mean, <laughs> I have just my cantrips left, <laughs> so uh, I am a much worse fighter. Make a quick perception check while you guys are running after okay. this. Uh, running after this goblin. Fifteen. Ten. I got eighteen. All right. Um, Nothing. Quinvalar and Flint, you notice that uh, underneath this boulder that you guys have approached next to, there is a human body. Uh, it looks like it was it like got crushed in the middle of its back when the boulder hit it. These boulders, by the way, are like three feet, sort of like three feet in diameter. Um, mm-hmm. and look to be several hundred pounds. They're very dense. Um, and underneath it, just you just see like the sort of the arms and legs of the remains of what looked like to have been a human at one point. And it, in its outstretched hand, it's grasping a satchel. Okay. Uh, can I grab the satchel and open it up? Have a sure. little look. Inside the satchel. Just looking for whiskey. Inside the satchel, you find four uh, vials of the same uh, healing potion-like substance that you found earlier. I I take one out. I, I put it in my pouch, but then I that's where the war uh, got it. Yeah, I, I throw uh, throw one. I throw the bag uh, to the person nearest to me. Can't quite see who that is there. I think firing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, what what I would like to do though is can Flint. Uh, bring his great axe uh, to the base of that boulder and try to lever it off. Sure. Um, and right. as you uh, guys are as you guys are doing, how that, many healing potions have I got now? Uh, there were four in the bag. He took one. So there's I, three left. He, he took one, and I had already had one from the original two. So now I've got four healing potions. Okay. Uh, and as you guys see, the the goblin that was running away from you has now gathered with what looks like five other goblins. Uh, sort of okay. in that farm field down to the south. 
Um, <sighs> you, well, you can definitely tell that they are <laughs> off in the distance. All right, is, uh, it, well, uh, is it well, very flat terrain? That's fairly flat, yeah. Uh, okay, I'm still going to try and uh, lift the boulder, and I'm going to try and do it so that it's... It, if it rolls, it rolls towards the goblins. Hey, make a strength check. All right, and while they're while they're Lift lifting the boulder, advantage because you're using a lever. While while they're using the boulder, I'm going to step forward and put my shield in front of me and my sword at the side and just be a defensive stance, like climb the shield and you, hold my action in case they charge. You have advantage, so roll it again. He rolled two and three. Oh, two and three. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really heavy boulder. It, uh, <laughs> if maybe if you push a little, no, no, it's it. You're just digging your axe into the ground now. <laughs> boulder is not. Man, my guys hate me today. And the boulder, like it's three feet in diameter, but it's bigger than you. So, like it is, it is a large, hefty rock. Um. Uh, and as you guys are looking on in the distance, you see the one that had originally run away from you continues running past. Uh, as the other five sort of scatter into sort of scatter into cover around uh, these buildings, waiting for you to approach. All right, I pull back out my I pull my shirt sword back out and like, well, let's go handle this. I'm going to start walking. Five, ten, ten. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna approach with my I'm gonna push the long sword away for a second and approach with my javelin, right. and I'm, as soon as I get within range, I'm gonna hurl. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's go ahead and roll some initiative again. Okay. Clear this out. I got a 10. 14. Hey, I have a 10. Oh. <laughs> Once again, Flint goes before me. I'm not going last, though. I'm last! Whoa. I'll just chill back here. Oh, and I'll add. All right, so we've got... That's a lot of goblins on the initiative tracker. <laughs> yep. Oh, and they're going first, of course. Not all of them. And then we add these couple of things. Oh, oh good. And they they may they may become relevant. They may not. I mean, out of game. I've been wondering where the giant has been hurling these boulders. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> Flint's not clever enough to have made the connection. No, no, I mean, Fyron doesn't. Fyron assumes that they've got a catapult somewhere. Out of game. This is Storm King's thunder. There's a giant somewhere. Maybe. Um. All right. So, looking at it first. Uh. So these guys are going to spend their turn cowering in cover. Uh, actually, no. One of them... Oh, no. They have bows. Hey. Um, so two of, oh, them, dear. two of them... Oh, Quinn Villar, You had to get close. <laughs> look around the yes, corner and a... see Quinn Villar sort of standing out in an open field. <laughs> and Flint from a distance... From, from, from back behind the boulder, Flint hears... Ah, stupid elfses! Time to fill with arrows! Um, <laughs> I relay that to the rest of the group. <laughs> so Flint from behind, from over by the boulder, goes. They said, "Stupid elves is time to fill." As arrows fly through the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I gathered that. Thank you. Uh, does a twenty and a does a twenty and a twenty-two hit you? Uh, yeah. All right, you take seven points of piercing damage and six points of piercing damage. Oh man! Womp. <laughs> So, Quinvalar, <laughs> Quinvalar turns to look back at the rest of the group, goes, what? Boom, bam. So, that is actually, oh, shit. No, you're not instant dead. No, but seven brings me to zero, yes. and then that one hits me you and gives me two death no, saving No, only throws. one, only one. one. Oh, okay. Uh, it's within five feet of you is a critical. Yeah. You're right, you are correct, you're right. So you have one death saving throw failed already, and you are at zero. Uh, and that makes it Quinvalar's turn. Roll a death, roll a death saving throw. <laughs> of course. Uh, there's two. So two, two failed death saving throws. Uh, 
The other two, uh, uh, one, so the next one uh, has a short bow but doesn't have an angle, and he's going to stay cowering cover. Uh, and the one that you guys can't see continues to do things you can't see. Um, Fyron, you just saw Quimbalar get nailed with uh, two arrows. <laughs> Flint also has an initiative of ten. I believe Flint goes before me. Uh, oh, did Flint roll ten? I don't have him on the thing. Yeah, yeah, ten. All right. Uh, so yeah, then in that case, yes, Flint, it is you. And you, uh, you, you, as you called out what the goblin was saying, you saw uh, Quinvalar get nailed with with a pair of arrows <laughs> and go down. Uh, Flint will move up to him and say, uh, "I'm going to take the potion that I had that I just got. Take it out of my pocket, pop the cork, uh, and I just I lift his head up uh, and I just say." Drink this, you wee porcupine! And I uh, make him plug it. Alright, uh, so, uh, well, Jeremy, go ahead and roll 2d4 plus 2. Uh, 2d4 plus 2. Hey, look, I'm all the way back up. You heal back to full. Hey. Because you only have 7 hit points. <laughs> yes, because I'm a wizard. Uh, and, and so that took your action. Do you want to? Do you want to use your bonus action for anything while you're out there in the middle of the open? <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I wanna. I can see a few of these gobos, Carter. Yeah, you can. Uh, I will point at the closest one to me, uh, and I just go, "You're next, you wee scunner!" And I go into a rage. All right, uh, roll me another intimidation check. <laughs> uh, that is. 18. 18. You you hear a collective <laughs> from behind Good. the uh, the buildings. Uh, now, uh, Firen. There, there's actually, that wait, actually, wait. Hang on. Uh, what's your dexterity, Firen? Uh, minus one. I, okay. have a, I have a dex of nine. Oh yeah. Uh, no, in that case. Uh, so in, in response to the in response to the screaming and threats, another Sorry, goblin. Another goblin pokes his head out from behind the corner and fires fires a short bow. And does a twenty one hit you? Me? No, Flint. Oh, Flint. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, you. So, in response to the threat, uh, a goblin pokes his head out and a, an arrow hits you in the chest, uh, dealing three points of damage to you. Uh, one I, or well, no, no, it, 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 that six damage half to three. Okay. Okay. okay, I uh, just, like as an interaction, I just pull the arrow out, yeah. look it square in the face, and then I'll lick my own blood off the tip of it. <laughs> the crazy look in my eye. And because you're the only one that understands Goblin, you hear, That's a fucked up dwarf! <laughs> 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 what really big eye, but... <laughs> <laughs> now it's Fire and Stern. All right. Um, there's that. There's that initial impulse of "Oh God, the elf is dead," and then okay, okay, we're good. Kunvalar, <laughs> you're on your back. There's an angry dwarf, an angry, smelly dwarf above you. Right. And, and you've got arrows Wait, in your wearing... chest. All right. I need wearing to get a, yeah, that's right. You're wearing a kilt, aren't you? A kilt. Yeah. <laughs> your view is just epic right now. <laughs> And then I'm going to... This is certainly undignified. I'm going to hurl my javelin at this first one. And of course, you know, dwarves that wear kilts, wear kilts as you're supposed to wear kilts, so... Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's going to be a seven total. My javelin goes elsewhere. You thought the hair was red on top, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, yeah, no, the, uh, 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 fire and hurls a javelin and it phoom, sticks into the wall next to one of the goblins. It doesn't It doesn't hit the goblin, but it hits the house next to him. Uh, which makes it another goblin's turn. That one is going to remain hidden for fear of getting hit by uh, an angry dwarf. And that makes it Milda's turn. Uh, I'm just going to step up closer. Um, can't move my token for some reason. Hey, hey Jeremy, remember Minds of Fendelver? Huh? Uh, that was for Jeremy, specifically. Uh, yes. Uh, which way do you want to go? Which way do you want to move? Uh, towards the corner. Is that the building just there? Mm -hmm. Towards the corner of that behind the boulder? Be 
Uh, so let's see. You have 25 feet of movement. You can get... Yeah, you can get right there. Yeah. 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 Can I see any goblins from there? Um, I don't know. Can you? This one... Uh... I think you can see... I think you can see that one, yeah. You can probably see... Yeah, yeah. you can see these those ones right there. I'm going to try and shoot this one. All right. An eleven, however, misses. You you hit the. Why do? You why hit, do roll twenties dice just hate us? I don't know. Uh, I know. You I blame the, me. You hit the wall right next. I mean, it's not just roll twenties dice. Flint's been rolling terrible with real yeah. dice. Yeah, my dice hate me. Uh, you hit the wall right next to the javelin that fire went through. Actually. Okay. Uh, you hey, we're consistent you're, at least. You're pretty certain that goblin's just ducking behind the wall whenever you shoot at him, and and you you correct instinctively, and it's hitting the wall instead. I feel like this is the role-playing version of The Ring, <laughs> where the curse is making its way into the real world now. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the two with short bows uh, think for a second. You hear some communication on the other side. Uh, Flint, you can hear. There's only like four of them. We can do this. <laughs> oh, goblins. <laughs> They're not smart. And two of them, the two that act on the same initiative, run up to flank Firen and go at him with their swords. Oh, no. They draw out a pair of scimitars and just... This might be bad. This might not be. Let's find out what they roll. Uh, does a 20 hit you? Yes. Does an 11 hit you? No. So okay. one of them... So you you bring that shield down and just I'm, knock... I'm it. blocking one with the shield. I can't block both of them yeah, at once. You, you knock that scimitar out of the way as it comes at you from one side, and then at, the other side gets you in the leg. You take three points of slashing damage. Ow, oh my. Ow. I... You're, don't, don't scoff at three points of damage. That'll, that I... takes the wizard down to half. <laughs> no, yeah, <laughs> right. That's, that's the point, you know? <laughs> yes, we get it. You have all the hit points because you're actually, the paladin. I'm pretty certain that uh, Flint has more than I do, actually. Yes, Flint does have more than you. Uh, and that makes it Quinn Villar's turn. All you're, right. You're on your so back Quinn with Villar's arrows in your chest. Getting back up, quickly swiping the arrows away. Um... Uh, a quick look to Flint. Thank you. Thank you, friend. And I am... So they have to be at least f- no more than five feet away. Can't wait for next week when the ranger yeah. arrives just goes, what the hell did you guys do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I am going to hop can up you, to this can you, can dude. Flame Blade hit both these goblins? No. They're not within five feet of each other. Oh. It could theoretically um, hit both of these goblins, though. I can't get up there. Yeah. Because that half my movement to get up. Yep. Um and yeah, put myself there. I put myself on the other side, but I have seen the halfling shoot one of us in the back already. <laughs> so <laughs> So I got a twenty three to hit that this hits. one. That hits roll damage. Eight got piercing it. damage. You step what kind of a sword is it? It's a short sword. It's a yes. It is a very nice elven short sword. Uh, so it's like like single blade, nice and curvy, like yep. legless style short sword. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you step up behind this goblin that's harassing fire and just uh, pardon me, just bring this, just bring it around and like sort of reverse grip, insert it into the goblin's throat, mm-hmm. and then just pull out and shove the goblin to the ground. Bam. All right. Uh, and that makes it their turn. Uh, so two more of them, uh, so one of them runs back out, uh, to support his buddy and attacks Firen. Doesn't have advantage though, so. But a 19 still hits you, I'm pretty certain. Uh, just Uh, barely. And you take four points of slashing damage. (laughs) Uh, as it runs up. (laughs) And, uh, another one that you can't see continues to do things that you can't see. Um, and that makes it Flint's turn. Okay. Um, Flint is gonna uh, run up to the to the closest one, flanking him. Mm-hmm. So, like here, like there. Yeah. Uh, and 
Swing with his great axe. You have advantage. All right. Anything. You have advantage, so swing that great axe. Yeah, I get a feeling I'm going to need that advantage. Come on, critical hit. <laughs> 21, though. That hits. Roll your damage. But one of those dice was a one. Ah! Oh, of course. Good. <laughs> so. Um, oh, so that's uh, 12 damage. Yeah, you lop a head off. Just goes clean flying. Yep. He, he, he shouts for. <laughs> you get the, and you get the good you get the good golf swing in too so like the axe goes from low to high shoot, takes the head off and it just goes nice uh, Milva you, you, you hear it splatter somewhere on the other side of the house that you're just sitting next to <laughs> can I hear anything else from that? Uh, a, a goblin chittering <laughs> <laughs> very surprised that his friend's head is <laughs> next to him <laughs> uh, and that makes it that goblin's turn actually that goblin looking over and seeing that their numbers have suddenly been drastically reduced <laughs> Flint you, you hear fuck this I'm out uh, <laughs> Flint, this shit I'm out cloud. this shit I'm out uh, and he starts running and he's going to take his he's going to take his full turn to just book it yoink Oh man! So he's, you just see goblin dust as this guy takes off. Um, Byron. All right. So I know it's an action to quaff a potion. Is it a bonus action to hand a potion to someone else? A bonus action to drink your own potion. Action to make somebody else drink a potion. Oh. Uh, if you say so, I'm, I know I'm, I remember the PHB's yeah. action. Whatever. Yep. Uh, My rules. Right. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, I will. Yeah, I'll drink a potion then. Three, four plus two. Yeah. <laughs> you recover ten hit points. I am back. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so that was the most action. Move to flank with Flint. Two of my spaces of movement. And swing the sword. 20 hits. Roll your damage. 7. Seven. You. Eat. And again, another goblin head goes flying, this time in the other direction, over Flint, and it sort of drips on him as it goes. Alright, so is it difficult terrain to pass over the fence, or can I just go? Yeah, yeah difficult terrain to get over the fence. Alright, so that's 5, 10, and then 15, 20, 25, 30. Alright. Yeah, you get right up over there. All right, that's my turn. All right, I have to I have to shift all of your perspectives to shift the uh, the the uh, audience cam. So right. All right. Uh, so that makes it the guy right next to you's turn, who sees he's in some deep shit, uh, uses a bonus action to disengage. Goblins. And Goblins, yo. Runs. Begins to run. Taking his movement, and then his action. <laughs> and so now you just have these two goblins that have been ducking underneath the uh, underneath the fences and just running through these fields. Uh, that makes it Quinvalar's turn. All right. Um, I am going to. Is it my turn? Yeah. I think it's Milva's. I was going to oh, say. Milva's turn. Sorry, I completely forgot about Milva. I'm sorry. Milva, your turn. Uh, cool. Let me see where am I. If I move one, two, there, can I see one to be able to shoot it? Yeah, yeah, you can see them. They're, they're a bit far away, but you can definitely shoot at it. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do that. It's it's going to be at disadvantage because it is outside of your short range. So roll twice okay. and take the lower. Roll again. But you still hit. Roll damage. Lovely. Seven. So you see the goblin, see where he's running. You've done this before. 
Actually, that's not even out of your short range because short bow short range is eighty. Oh, is it eighty? I thought it was. I thought short bow was forty. No, it's, it's eighty. 80. Oh, never mind. Good. Either way, you hit. Uh, Either way, so yeah. yeah, you arc it back, and the arrow goes lobbing up into the air. And as this goblin is running across the field, it just comes straight down and gets him in the top of the head, goes down through the jaw, and it collapses on the ground. Nice. Just goblin head. <laughs> All right. Now it's Quinvalar's turn. Now. Okay. Um, there is absolutely no way I'm catching this guy. Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean I'm not going to try. Uh, so I am just going to dash 60 feet this away, which puts me there. And that's everything. You know how many range spells you can use? Uh, I have to dash. No. Which is my action. That's right. That's right. I only, I, I only have one... I'm down to my cantrips because we I used all my spells on the wards, <laughs> um, and my I only mean, cantrip that I have is is only fifteen foot range. The wards were by and far the most dangerous enemies in the yes, area. Yes, so exactly. That's fair. Yeah. Um, actually, so then you can actually see what the other goblin has been up to. You see that you actually now from your angle you can see there are a pair of goblins hanging out of the windmill. Uh, w with bows looking in your direction. Um, oh. And the other two goblins are running towards that. Okay. I didn't just move myself into bow range for them, did I? Uh, you did. Uh, yes, you, you did. are definitely within bow range. But, okay, sweet! But, I, haven't been, I haven't been brought down to zero hit points in like two whole rounds. They spent their turn waiting, so... Uh... <laughs> Like, realistically speaking, the only weapons in a regular battlefield circumstance that you're going to get into long range with are throwing weapons. Because uh, so, all yeah. kinds of bows have stupid range. Gwork, the other goblin, uh, runs up into the into the uh, windmill. You assume that they're going to be setting up to shoot at you as well. And the other goblin gets up to the hill. Uh, so I call back... Uh, we have more in the windmill, and they look like they are armed with bows. All right, oh, I, don't, I can't see the windmill right now, but if I remember correctly, Flint. it's like right around here. Yeah, which you is, can. Yeah. yeah, you can see the windmill from. You can see the top of the windmill from where you're at. You can pretty, pretty yeah. see the windmill anywhere in the town. I, mean, I, I, I physically can't see it because of the, yeah. the light blocking from the yeah, from the buildings. It's, it's over here. Yeah. So, sorry, where's the windmill again? Yeah. That. It is, yeah, over this way. From it is, yes, in in okay. that direction. That's where he's just told me there's more goblins. That's where I'm going. All right, so you just take off <laughs> in a full run? Yeah. All right, so that's going to get you 50 feet. Get you over to that boulder. Well, bam. It's a nice boulder. That's a nice boulder. <laughs> All right, and firing. Let's see. 60 feet runs me around the corner to right about there. All right. And that makes it... Milva, because I did a thing previously. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to dash as far forward as I can as well. All right. I'll slap you. And apparently slap Flint. <laughs> yeah, as as Milva approaches, he looks at he looks at Milva and goes, Hit me! Alright, make like a it. roll of oh, unarmed attack. Because he actually has to take damage for you to for it to stay. Uh, uh, I just have to yeah. an attack has to be made on me, or I have to make an attack. Okay. So yeah, uh Plus your dexterity? Yeah, you hit, I'm pretty certain. Uh, so you take one point of I'll, bludgeoning I'll damage. <laughs> yeah, I'll take that one. <laughs> he just gets a little shock look on his face just for one second, like, hurry! And we'll keep going. <laughs> Slap! All right, top of the round, their turn. Uh, they have lots of targets to choose from, so two of them start taking pot shots. 
Uh, Firen, you're getting up. Uh, an arrow comes shooting at you, and Flint, an arrow comes shooting at you. Uh, but a nine misses Firen. However, a natural 20 hits Flint. Oh my god. Uh, and you take nine points of piercing damage reduced to half to four. So. Oh. Oh, just close. Ding. So yeah, and then and and flash. yeah. So like, fire and, uh, an arrow bounces off fire and shield, and then another one. Like you turn and start roaring, and uh, another arrow comes flying out, slices through your cheek where you just got slapped, and then embeds <laughs> itself in your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, Quinvalar. All right. Ginnar is going to be a little bit tactical. These boulders are large enough for you to take cover behind if you so desire, by the way. And is going to start creeping around this way. That's 30. At least someone on the part is being tactical. <laughs> um, and I think another 30 will get me but yeah, yeah, not quite there. Um, can get you behind that boulder, and that's yeah. So you see, there's a house to the south of this farmer's field. It looks like a boulder smashed into it from above and just collapsed the house, like in the middle of it. I make it, yeah, yeah, make it behind that boulder. Sure. There we go, and now, that's my turn. As you get into that position, I want you to make a perception check. Oh, great. That is a 20. All right. Uh, so you hear this like sort of scratching sound, almost like a cat kneading wood. And you hear a... <laughs> and as you look uh, over to one side, you see a tressum. Uh yeah. Looks like it was, uh, it's sort of been hiding out in the area. Sorry, a what? Uh, uh, a tressum. Hang on one second. Okay. Uh, it it's looks, a small winged cat. It is a small winged cat uh, that looks like it's very upset that its home has been crushed by a boulder. Um, and it's just sort of sitting there staring at you and hissing. Sorry, it wasn't me. I did... I'm um, trying to deal with the, the. We'll do what we can when we get the opportunity. So make <laughs> me a animal handling check. Okay. That's an eight. Uh, so yeah, it 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 sort of hisses and and swats out at you. Okay. With a natural twenty. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm going to get killed, killed by, by a cat. cat. You take two points of damage. <laughs> okay, that's not too bad. And it sort of dashes further back into the house. Okay. <laughs> not just got a cat. raked by a cat. <laughs> not just a cat, a flying magical cat. Yes. No, yes. I'm keeping that in mind because those things can be quite handy and helpful. Yeah. It, and it looks like... It looks like... I, can I show this to you? I should be able to show this. How do I? Sh Why won't you let me show you? Uh, I'll find. I'll find a picture in a minute. Uh, but yeah. So that makes it. Uh, one of the goblins turns. The go This goblin uh, spends its turn getting set up inside the windmill. Uh, Flint, your turn. I will. Keep going towards the windmill, as that's the as far as I know, that's still where the nearest goblins are. Yep. So I'm just trying to figure out how far I can get. You can get with double movement. You can get right around to that boulder. Uh, I will go to the back of that boulder and put my back against it. Which boulder? This one. Uh, this one, yeah. Boom. Yeah, you get uh, right up in cover with that ball. I, can I get this side? So I'm on the opposite side there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, cool. I'm literally like 
I'd run up and then dive my back to the boulder, getting yep. ready to go around and chop. Sounds good to me. Uh, that makes it Firen's turn. Right. I will also head over to take cover at the boulder and use my action to toss my one remaining javelin at the goblin who is still out in the open. So I think uh, I only have... Yeah. Only, oh, no, I have, I have five javelins. I have way more. I thought I only had two. That's ten. I miss. <clears throat> uh, so, yeah, I'm... Uh, you, if you guys look in your... Uh, in in your journal, you will now see the handout for a tresum, so you can see what they look like. Yep, ah, I see. They are awesome. Uh, little kind of adorable. Well, uh, well, at home, they look like that. All right, can't see it. Never mind. Oh well. Uh, so yeah. Uh, you throw the javelin and ten misses. No, so it phoom, buries in the ground. Have you been picking your javelins up, by the way? Uh, I picked up the one that I killed the guy with and the one that I ran past. So, yeah, yeah, I picked the other okay. two up already. Okay. Yeah. So you picked them up. All right, and that makes it this guy's turn who scrambles up the hill and into the uh, windmill, which makes it Milva's turn. Lovely. I'm just going to move behind this boulder here. All right. And that's double movement anyway, so that's me done. All right. And that makes it back to the top. So they start taking pot shots out at... So, Firen, you're not quite behind the boulder. Um, did you mean to get behind the boulder? or? I, yes, I meant to. I meant to take cover with the boulder. There you go. Put you right there. Um, all right. So a pair of arrows fly out at Firen and Flint. And they have disadvantage and most three quarters cover. But how much? I believe cover also adds a little bit to your AC. It does on my end. Uh, so a thirteen misses both of you. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so you you just hear these thum, thum, whoosh, tink tink as these arrows bounce off the boulder that you've taken cover behind. I just nudge firing in the in the ribs and just give a little chuckle, just like. <laughs> And uh, Firen's, like, very much set face, like, yes, this, this, is, this is very helpful, but we need to get into that windmill. It's so I know exciting. you're excited to start killing. Quinvalar, do you, want to, right. do, do you want to try to make the Tressum your familiar? Not, at, well, first of all, I would need the find familiar spell. It's true, it's true. Um, I will befriend the winged cat later. For now, there are things shooting at us. All right. Um, so I am moving up, dashing up to there, and hiding behind that boulder. All right, Quimbalar takes out across the field. And that's and my move. Puts his shoulder to boulder. Or my action. Actually, I don't know, that was my full dash, so never mind. Yeah, that's my action. All right, and another goblin right. is now set up in the windmill. Takes a pot shot at Flint again. Fortunately, we're all in cover. Uh, does a 16 hit you, Flint? Yeah. It does? Yeah. What's your AC? 14. 14? With, sure. yeah, yeah. with, with the cover from the boulder, it does not. So, oh, okay. Cool. So, ping. Again, this one this one came a little closer, and you actually see it, like, strafe the boulder just slightly, but because the, if the boulder wasn't there, it probably would have hit you. But because it was, it sort of glances off to the side and hits the ground next to you. Good. <laughs> All right, and that makes it uh, Flint's turn. Uh, I will. Uh, so the 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 windmill itself is fifteen feet up from ground level, as you can see mm -hmm. on the map. How the map says plus five feet, plus ten feet. So mm -hmm. as you go up the hill, just take into account the increase in distance. Okay. So I can be twenty five feet towards the windmill. So with with the five feet increase, you can get to here. Because you're going five feet up as well as uh, yeah, five feet yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, five. Or you can dash uh, for 50. It'll take you... 50 will take you right to the windmill. But yeah, I will, go, I will go right to the windmill. So you 
great you know you you get this big grin on your face because you're about to run through a hail of arrows as far as your mind is concerned um yeah. even though they're reloading but still <laughs> when i when i get to the when i get to the windmill yep i want to try and are they on the outside of the windmill or they're, the inside they're of inside. the windmill they're inside it okay i am uh gonna literally where the almost where the opposite path is on that corner uh, I'm not. I don't know how to, to show you on the map, but just on that corner, so my, the full fifty, and I'm going to be hiding with like my back to the corner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. So, not this corner, but this corner. Uh, no, the other one. The other, the other corner. This one. No, no. The, the other one that was closest to me. The one that he was. The one that he was at. Oh, he was trying was to hide there. against the corner. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Like on the other side of, of the. Yeah. Angle. So yeah. I'm literally, like, I'll just move it a little bit. There you go. Yeah. Right there. Yeah, yeah, there, there, yeah, yeah, there just there. Got it. Cool. All right. So, yeah, you, you're back up. The door to the windmill is right to your left. Yeah. So you are ready to kick down that door and start killing goblins any second now. Yeah. Um, and that makes it Firen's turn. Uh, if you can get up there, I should be able to, with a dash, get a couple, little bit, couple, a little bit further than him. Yeah, so can, I would like can... to get to the door. Yeah, you can dash to the door. So you get up there, plant your shield like sort of right next to you, and are just ready to go through that door. Yep. Um, uh, one of the goblins that made it inside last round realizes that people are outside the door because there was just too thunk thunk as you guys but, uh, backed up against the walls. And you hear inside, uh, um, and Flint, you hear, they're right outside! Let's light it up! Do they really <laughs> want to set themselves on fire? Light it up can have multiple meanings. I it's mean, with good. goblins. That's what you hear, Flint. Uh, Flint does not know what to make of that. Melva, your turn. Uh, I'm just gonna carry on, come a little closer, so hiding behind. I really hope they just set the windmill on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's 25, I believe. I can't see what's in front of me. Where... Yeah. Oh, because it's still blacked out. Yep. Can I not see that? Uh, you should be able to see what's in front of you. Exactly. I, I can't see it's it. It's all blacked out on the map. Oh, the windmill? Inside the windmill? No, no. The path in front of her and where oh. the windmill is. Interesting. That's, that's interesting. Uh, adjust the zoom level on your map. That might be part of the issue. Because it shouldn't be blacked out because you have sight. Still the same. Oh, hang on. I see what happened. Oh, did a Milva's token stop being a Milva token? Uh, no, it stopped having sight for some reason. Uh, ah, yeah, cool, cool. Now you have that, sight. Yeah. In that case, I, I believe, can I get behind this wall then near uh, the windmill? Yeah. Yeah, you can get there. Yeah, cool. Cool. That's where I'm going. Alright, um, so... Inside the tower, you hear goblin mutterings. It's too faint for you to make out. Now they're they're like sort of muttering quietly to each other, but there are no arrows shooting out. Okay. So they're doing uh, they're they're something. So Quinvalar, it's your turn. All right. Um. Uh, I will. Let's see. Yeah, I will move up right next to Melva. Um, How tall is and it? yeah, that's about as far as I'm willing to go at the moment. Uh, what was the question? Because uh, how tall is this windmill? Uh, the windmill is. Uh... 
It self it itself stands twenty feet high. Uh, sorry, the the sorry the, the hill itself is ten feet high, and then the windmill stands about another twenty feet uh, a twenty feet higher. Okay. Uh, twenty twenty five feet. Sorry. Okay. And just to be safe, since there's uh, I'm not rushing up to the tower or to the windmill itself. Um, I am going to cast blade ward on myself for okay. my action. So I have resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Yep. For until the end of my next turn. All right. And that makes... So you hear... Flint hears some more gobbledygook inside the tower. And now it's Flint's turn. Whenever I, believe that's actually, I believe that's actually the name of the goblin language, isn't it? I believe Gobbled it. Yeah, gobbledygook. <laughs> right. Flint is going to just burst through the door. Axe at the ready. All right, so you... Phew, do you say anything as you go through the door? No. All right, so wham, the door kicks open. You step in, and you find yourself surrounded by hay bales. Okay, I just and, wanted to see what saw well, first, yeah. Well, as you step in, several held actions go off. Uh, so first, <laughs> the... Um, oh, dear. One of the goblins throws a torch into the hay bales. Make a perception check for me real quick. 20. You notice that there's sort of an acrid smell to the hay bales, like they've been covered in something. Um, and the torch hits the ground, and the entire area around you lights up. And you realize you remember what that smell is. They doused the hay bales in whiskey. Oh. Um, and so... The, I mean, you did ask for whiskey earlier. Yeah. The, uh, so... Uh. The entire area. The... Sorry, was that? No, no, I was just going to see whether I could use the rest of my amusement to dive back out the door. You can in just a second. So yeah, so the entire bottom floor of the windmill lights up, and then you hear Nyaah! or in Goblin Banzai as goblins dive out the windows on the second floor of this windmill, uh, hitting the ground outside. Uh, Please on the tell me some of them died of falling damage. <laughs> well, we're gonna find out. I really hope it is. I just want all of them to jump out the second story window and die. We are about to find out. <laughs> uh, so three of them land pretty gracefully and take off and just bolt uh, to the north, heading down the hill. One okay. of them lands and sprains their f and just like lands and you hear a. Or actually, uh, Milva and uh, Quinvalar hear a as it lands wrong on its leg. Uh, and it takes... And it takes some damage as it hits the ground. Uh, and it can't continue after as the other three book it, begin booking it. Uh, now you can use the rest of your movement to dive back out of the now inflamed windmill. Yeah. Uh, how much movement have I got left? So it took you. It only took you five. It only took you five feet to get in the door. So you've got the rest remaining twenty feet. Okay, so I'm gonna dive back out and uh, move a little bit uh, off to one side, just to here. Uh, as I do so, I I like. Literally dive out, do a, a little dwarven roll uh, <laughs> to, get, to get back up. Yeah, so uh, flames. So for for Firen's uh, perspective, uh, he kicks in the door, walks in, and then a gout of flame erupts out the door <laughs> as he comes rolling back out. Oh god, it's, it's, it's so perfect in my head. It's just, Doo! yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I as I get back to my feet. I, uh, I lift my head slowly, uh, and I, I look at Byron and say, They're wasting the whiskey! Just tears coming down my face like this. I'm so sorry, my friend. Like tears on a soot-covered on a soot, soot covered dwarven face. Yeah. Um, can I uh, throw a hand axe? Yeah, they're within range. So, yeah, at the nearest one. Eight. That misses. You, you, you're, you're, you're so, like, you're, 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 you are rage crying right now. 
<laughs> and the rage crying and the r- rage crying and accurately throwing a hand axe don't mix. So you just you just like casually throw it. You don't even care right now. It just it just goes off. Uh, now, uh, in addition to the roar of flames and squealing of goblins, uh, Quinvalar and Milva can hear a dwarf sobbing. <laughs> uh, and that makes it Firen's turn. Hello. <laughs> so the windmill's going up in front of you. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the power to put out that fire. <laughs> so let's bring justice to these goblins. I'm going to chase after this one that's fleeing and use my attack. All right. I'm going to be not with advantage. Maybe a nine. <laughs> uh, nine misses. It ducks underneath as you're. These you're dice going... do not like us unless we have advantage today. You're going downhill. Apparently. You're going downhill and it's running away. It ducks underneath and you just swing too high. All right. Uh, that makes it Bilks, uh, the one of the goblins' turn, um, who continues to run. Bye, Bilk. Okay. Yeah. From. <laughs> And you just hear, uh, and, and in Goblin, Flint hears, See ya, suckers! It sounds like he was <laughs> yelling at the other goblins. <laughs> Milva. Right. Um, is this one who fell out and hurt himself uh, aware of us? Uh, yes. Oh, well, okay. Uh, I'll try to shoot it. Alternatively, you could shoot the one that Firen is in melee range with to get a uh, attack to get a sneak attack. Oh yeah, lovely. Let's do that then. Yep. Yeah, because you're you're on sort of on the same level of the hill, so you can see them. Okay. Twenty three hits. Excellent. Twenty three and six piercing damage. And it doesn't matter what you roll on the sneak attack; you kill it. So. <laughs> Bam! And the one seven next hit to... points. The one next to Byron goes down. I will move back behind here. Okay. Nice. And that makes it uh, another goblin's turn. Yeah. Uh, so this goblin continues running, yelling, Get away from me! Uh, and Quinvalar. All right, I'm going to go finish off this poor bastard over here. And as you, Hopefully. As, as you approach, you can see that it's a female goblin, and she broke her leg. Okay. Oh. Yes, this is, this is really a mercy killing. Um, or it is a miss, because I rolled a set. Wait, is she is she prone? Yes. Oh, then I have advantage. Yes. 17. Yep, you hit. Roll damage. All right. You Five not, piercing you damage. Slit the throat. Yep. And that was only like five feet of my movement. Yep. So I will use my other twenty-five to get behind this boulder up here. All right. Because uh, there ain't much I can do about the windmill being on fire either. Flint. Okay. Poor, poor goblins. <laughs> I mean, they're the ones who attacked the town. Yeah. They had it coming. They had it coming. They, um, it coming. they only have themselves to blame. So to blame. Uh, <laughs> Musical theater fans, ladies and gentlemen. Yay! <laughs> uh, I'm going to move over to here. Uh, still just angry as hell. Uh... I still can't reach them with melee, so I'm going to throw another hand axe. All right. Uh, disadvantage because there's a building between you. Oh, yeah. So yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go up. Three. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hits the side of the wall of the building. And that was my uh, last hand axe. <laughs> uh, the, this building, which, you know, looks like it was kind of buried, anyways. Oh. I'm I'm standing at the spot where I missed that goblin a second ago, so I'll pick my javelin back up too. 
Uh, yep. And that makes it Fyron's turn. Uh, speaking of javelins. Yeah. Hi. Uh, let's make a toss. Thirteen. Uh, thirteen misses. <laughs> Hit the ground again. Grab the rest. Ken, uh, if we don't have advantage, the dice are not with us. <laughs> I mean, you've killed almost all the goblins. I don't know what you're talking about. With advantage every time. <laughs> not every time. Uh, Bilk continues to run. And and Jeremy did roast a warg in one shot, so... This is true. Uh, Milva, your turn. Perfect. I'll move up closer. There. And shoot the one that's running away. Shoot him. Shoot him. Kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. him. 12 misses. (laughs) Oh, man. Never mind. All right. Uh, That makes it their turn. uh, Goblin's turn again. Goblin keeps running. Uh, Quinvalar. Quinvalar stops running after the goblin. (laughs) Quinvalar's a little winded right now. (laughs) No, no, well, yeah, perhaps a little bit. But simply stops because this is a losing proposition. (laughs) There is no, there is not going to be any catching up. Does Quinvalar suggest this to the rest? Just, yeah. Yeah, Firen's coming to that thing. We're going to... I don't think anyone's Just gonna let those that. ones it's... go. There are perhaps more important things. We will we will catch them when they attempt to do something else criminally <laughs> stupid. They might have loot on them, though. I, I, I don't know that we'll be able to convince Flint. No, no. But it needs to be said regardless. And, f- and so, just for his move, goes over and sits on the boulder. It's a bit too tall to sit on, but you can lean on Leans instead. on the boulder. Uh, Flint, it's your turn. You can see the, you can see those goblins. They're just on the other side of that field. Um, uh, uh, Flint is going to... Uh, how far can I move? Uh, 25 foot movement speed with it. And uh, <laughs> getting over the fence is rough terrain, so it takes double the, it takes 10 feet to get over the fence. Okay. Uh, he will just move, uh, yeah, just literally just over the fence. Yep. And the one that he tried to hit last time. Mm-hmm. He's going to pull out a javelin uh, and take a shot with his javelin. Bob that javelin. Uh, yeah, 20. That hits. Roll damage. Oh, no, it's not. Uh, D6. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is that plus two range? Well, you're, you're raging, so you also get your rage damage. Six. Yeah, so that's six altogether. Six altogether? Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, you get him with a javelin, and he just goes down. Good. Flint <laughs> feels a little bit better now. And that makes it Firen's turn. All right, uh, I'm just going to jog over to where my javelin landed and pick it back up. Oh, he's still in range. I can make one more toss. <laughs> Alright. Make that throw. Six. Nope. You hit the, you hit the fence. Thunk. Thunk. Alright. I am no longer really pursuing. So. Yeah. Mm. You can theoretically still hit him. I can move a little bit closer. Yeah, I, I'm, I'll move up there. And try and shoot him. Come on, natural 20. 
21 is close enough. <sighs> Four. Get him in the shoulder with an arrow. He's still going. Oh, man. And it's his turn. And he continues to book it out of town. Bye, Bilk. No, that one's Yek. Bilk already <laughs> died. Aww. <laughs> Bilk got taken out by Flint. That saddens me for reasons I do not wish to explain. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that makes it Quinvalar's turn. So you're, Good. Pretty, you're pretty certain you're not chasing after? Quinvalar continues to lean against the boulder. All right. Flint? I'm like, no, no, you can, you can. You can continue to run after, completely ignore what I will. My, my advice, that's fine. Meanwhile, I'm the not windmill off personally. to your left still in flames. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's not much I can now. do about that. Or that. Yep. All right, Flint, what are you doing? Hmm. Can I, uh... Can I see the goblin? Uh, you've, you're pretty certain he got to the drawbridge. Yeah, no, at that point, I I, I'll, I won't keep pursuing him. Right. Um, and I will just make... Oh, uh, I will just make my way back to uh, the... You're going to go the, collect your thrown weapons? Yeah, yeah, I'll go pick up my hand axes. Um, I, don't, I don't bother about the javelin, but I'll go pick up my two hand axes because they actually mean something to me. All right. Uh, so yeah, uh, that makes it. So Flint is disengaged. Quinvalar is disengaged. Firing. I'm gonna spend the twenty feet of movement to pick up my javelin, uh, and then twenty-five, thirty dash to head back to the windmill and start conventionally fire. Is there a well nearby? Um, no. There's a moat. I do. I have a bucket. You're pretty certain the people of this town draw their, uh, draw, you know, draw their water from the moat. Do I see a bucket lying around? No. I need to find a bucket and start conventionally firefighting. All right. So you you're, you you think maybe to go over to like one of the farmhouses, perhaps? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you 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 start making your way to a farmhouse. Uh, yeah. Milva. Um. Disengaging or going to keep trying? 30. Everybody's given up. I don't like that. I'm going to carry on moving forward. Okay. I'm going to get... Uh, I'd like to get to the drawbridge. I kind of have a feeling he'll bring reinforcements otherwise. So... Uh, as far as I can move towards the drawbridge, I don't seem to be able to move my token anymore. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll go ahead and say that you guys are out of combat for now. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, so you head up to the drawbridge. By the time you get there, he is almost out of sight. Like he is just straight running for the the hills. Uh, I'm going to try and get as close as I can and shoot. All right, make me an attack with disadvantage. Okie doke. I'm actually making my way back to the tressum. So you boom, and boom, the arrow hits the ground somewhere and. You know, you sort of side it, and he's he's just too far out now. Ah, oh, man. Um, Flint would like to head back towards the uh, windmill. And what kind of ground is it? Is it just... It's like grass. Okay. Uh, he's going to start digging into the, into the ground and then trying to dump the soil on top of anything burning. And... Uh... Can I... Firing, yeah, you do find a bucket. Could, could I try and uh, pull the drawbridge up? Yeah, yeah, so you, you go into one of the watchtowers and you see there's this big wheel, uh, this big, like, wheel attached to a chain that you'd have to start turning. Uh -huh. uh, so go ahead and make me a strength check. Oh, <laughs> not um, my point. Is that busted drawbridge, like, laying in the moat? Uh, to the south? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it's not a br it's not a drawbridge. To the south, that's an actual bridge, and okay. uh, it 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 oh, just has. Uh, sorry, it did it with disadvantage. Uh, 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 you, you probably had it still toggled previously, but even with a ten, uh, yeah, you're not you're not strong enough to 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 reel this thing in yet. I'm gonna call out, guys. 
Little help here. So you all hear Milva calling from the drawbridge. Can we pull this thing up? Uh, one moment. I will be. I will. I will be there in a minute as I'm continuing to approach the house. All right. So yeah, you approach the house and you see the 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 tressum is still sitting there. You're sort of growling, kind of not moving towards you, but definitely growling. Mm-hmm. Um, see, so, yeah, I come up as as non-threatening as possible. Um, that's are you all right? Is, is are you okay? Come that w- not going to hurt you. We understand something is something has been. Uh, uh, your 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 city is under assault. Um, are you are you the only person who lives here? I'm sorry, I do not speak um, uh, your language. Uh, is he, yes, no. It, it you imagine. If a cat could roll its eyes the way humans roll their eyes, this cat just rolled its eyes at you. Uh, it's a cat. Um, and it looks at you and... <laughs> it's a winged and cat, but it's a cat. Flaps wings and, like, shakes its head no. Okay. Uh, uh, do you want me to... Is, 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 uh... Well, this is going to take a while. I'm going to start... start, start... Okay. Looking through the house, seeing if there's anybody else. All right. Um, All right. Um, I find a bucket and hopefully a length of rope as well. You did hear Milva calling for help. Oh, by the drawbridge. Yeah, I know. I just, I just need to grab that stuff before I go over. All right. Yeah. So you, you found, you found some rope in a bucket. All right. And then I will make my way over to Milva to help try and pull the drawbridge. All right. Right, after we get after we get this drawbridge up, I need some help fighting that fire that's burning in the windmill. Oh, oh. but I, I'm pretty sure the windmill's um, gone now. So. And yes, but we need to put the fire out before it spreads to the dry grass around it. Fine, I'll help you if you help me. Flint, meanwhile, has just been digging <laughs> up the grass to make sure it doesn't do that. Uh, all right. <laughs> So, uh, Fyron, make a strength check with advantage. Alright. I'm not super strong, but... <laughs> so, you guys start... Double the, 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 the... So, uh, Milva, you jump up and grab the wheel and try to use your body weight to pull one direction. And Fyron, you start pulling the other direction. And so you guys are just sort of fighting with the wheel. trying to. When, 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 when we straighten ourselves out, can we try again? And then you look over and realize what's happening. <laughs> Okay. Try again. There yeah. we go. There's a natural twenty. This time you you the first natural so, twenty of the game. So you see what Milva's doing and go oh and so start pushing instead of pulling firing, and when you when you do that the thing and the drawbridge slowly. And it's well, off to the fire. Actually, the second natural twenty of the game. <laughs> there was an initiative natural 20. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, Quinvalar, make an animal handling with advantage. Okay. All right. So I'm going to I'm gonna use his rope and bucket to start pulling water out from the broken bridge and bring it over to the fire. Okay. That's a 17. So you've 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 been helping this this Tressum uh, yes. look and and that sort of is inuring it to you a little bit more. Okay. Um, and so it'll, it it stops hissing and and waving its tail and and as you look through the uh uh, as you look through the bedroom or the 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 building, the residence, um, mm-hmm. uh, you see you you eventually find the bodies of uh, of a, a woman and a man and a woman. Um, uh, it's an elderly human couple. Looks like when the when the when the boulder hit the roof, it collapsed. Looks like their living room on top of them. Okay. Uh, and uh, they are both dead. Oh. Looks okay. Like the, the Tresum is the only one that sort of survived the house collapsing. Does the Tresum seem to be aware of this fact? So I don't have to break really bad news. Yeah, no, news. no. It, 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 it is fully aware. As, as okay. It's, it's just sort of sitting there. You get a sense that it's sort of 
was mournfully protecting its masters. Right. Place, like, uh, its its masters are dead, and this is all it has left, really. Yeah, I I'm so very sorry. Um. Uh, do you do you want to stay here? Would you like to come with us? Uh, potentially avenge some some. Uh, make me another animal handling check with advantage. Okay. A uh, ten. Damn it! It sort of looks up at you, tilts its head. The wings flip out, and it sort of flies up and sits on your shoulder. Awesome. <laughs> All right, let's go. Uh, I have some friends to introduce you to. Um, I'll have to figure out your name at some point, but for now, and I will start making my way back to uh, the make rest. A, make a perception check. Okay. That should not uh, be with advantage, but that was a 16. The first one was a 16, yeah. Uh, yeah. You notice, actually, that it has a little uh, little copper oh, name tag. Oh, wonderful. Uh, What's its name? Relix. R-I-L-L-I-X. Relix. Wonderful to meet you, Relix. Uh, I'm Kinvalar. Um, and yeah, I'm making my way back. I will make you able to control this. Yay! Uh, tokens. You now have a Petrasm. Best goblin invasion ever. All right. <laughs> you now have control. Sweet. Over... We are heading over this way, and he is. There you go. All right. Uh, so yeah, you guys are starting to put out the fire. Uh, you, as you start pouring water on the fire, you realize very quickly it's not going to work because you, as you splash water into the fire, it just seems to spread the fire. Okay. Yeah, but Flint is still throwing soil on it. Yeah, like the the throwing soil on it seems to work more than than spreading than splashing water. All right, uh, in that case, I will. I don't have a shovel. Can I try to find a shovel? Do you, you go back to the farm? Yeah, yeah. Let's go find go find shovels. Yeah, you go back. You can find a couple of shovels and some hoes and some pickaxes and things that start that... shoveling soil onto the fire. All right, I want everybody to make everybody that's helping put out the fire make me. Yeah, I will go ahead and help. I'll tell Relic stay back. And... Uh, so yeah, everyone that's helping put out the fire, give me. Athletics. I don't know. I'm trying to. Yeah, athletics. Dragon chess. Twenty-one. Uh, Fifteen. Or, yeah, if it's athletics, 21 as well. <gasps> athletics, 21, 15. Yeah, okay, so after a while, you guys managed to put enough soil to sort of put out the fire. Fortunately, it was sort of localized to the first floor, the second floor, as while they caught fire, they weren't, the, they didn't have the fuel on them. Uh, so you managed to put out the fire before the entire thing comes down. Um, okay. Eh, the, the inside is pretty smoky and burnt out, but it's not falling over. Excellent. Uh, yeah, so um, once the once the fire's out, Flint moves in, and I am looking all the way around that floor, uh, especially for any full whiskey bottles. <laughs> uh, you find some broken bits of glass that are smoky uh, and, and 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 like sort of charred. You feel like what they didn't open the bottles and pour them out so much as they just threw bottles at the ground. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, unfortunately, you don't find anything full. Uh, Lens keep sobbing. You do, however, recall that you did pass a tavern. Right. Um, I think we should probably see if there's any survivors in this town and um, see what we can do. And see if we can yes. see where they came from. Yeah. I will... Uh, Start checking, going around the palisade, the the wall, mm -hmm. and start checking for any 
ex exits and entries uh, that I can secure. And while I'm doing that, I will keep my eye out for bodies. Okay, make a perception check for me. Okay. Just a regular perception check. And where is everybody else looking? Um, I am looking... So the place that people would flee is the place of gathering. So there's a town hall or a tavern. Yeah, so you noticed from, just from the structure next to the temple, uh, so uh, building this, this building up here next to the temple uh, is is was definitely a tavern, and it seemed there were a couple of places where it had been hit by boulders, but pretty much seemed intact. And um, that is where Flint goes. And uh, uh, Milva, while you're circling the palisades, you see where a couple of wa a couple of watchtowers have been destroyed. Uh, you also notice uh, movement in the keep across the bridge, the broken bridge. Ah, there is a keep. That's where fire would be heading. Yeah, there is a keep. Because that, 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 that seems like the place where people would flee. Yeah, the keep is... To, I, so so the ta there's a tavern to the north and a keep to the south across that broken bridge. Oh, I am looking at my new feline friend. Which way should we go to get to the most villagers? Uh, it makes a exception check. All right, um... Milva, can you think of a way to get across this bridge? Uh, it it sort of looks to the south, okay. and then also looks to the north. Hmm. I'd like I'd like to uh, see if I can find a way getting over this bridge here. So the bridge, there's about a twenty foot gap between the between one side of the bridge and the other, and then it's a it's a further like you know forty fifty foot drop into the water below. Um, it looks Can you find any, any planks from any of the destroyed buildings? You could potentially do that. It definitely it looks like something heavy fell through the bridge and into the water. Like yes. Wham. I think we should maybe try and find some planks from uh, the building that's been destroyed, maybe, to try and make a bridge, like p patch up the hole. <laughs> Very well. Uh, so so it's... Try and find some boards that are long enough to lay across the bridge, and try and make a makeshift platform to walk across. All right. Uh, so the people that are working on the bridge, I want you to make me some investigation, survival. Um, either investigation or survival, whichever is better. For uh, survival is better for me. The three of you that are doing that, and Quinvalar, are you helping them or are you investigating to the north? Um, you know what? I think there's only so many people that can work on a bridge that's that wide. I'm going to head north. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you head north. And the, 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 the cat sort of is indicating this large building directly opposite. The cat. Okay. Perfect. I rolled 15 on survival. All right. What did, did, was Flint helping with the bridge or is Flint doing something else? Uh, Flint's gone to the tavern. Okay, so yeah, so Quinvalar, you and Flint sort of converge on the tavern at the same yep. time. Go with my dwarven friend over to the tavern. All right, uh, Firen, you find an elf and a dwarf and a flying cat walk into a bar. Uh, Firen, you <laughs> find you find some wood, uh, uh, and and the, you and Milva start begin working on that. Um, make me. Um. Do either of you have any sort of tool proficiencies? Uh, I have. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm not looking to make like a permanent bridge. I'm just looking to get planks that are long enough that I can lay them across yeah. the bridge. I need, so I need both of you to make me intelligence checks. Okay. This is oh, okay. Because the, 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 the physical ability to make a bridge, you, you guys have. It's whether or not you're smart enough to make a good bridge. A good 17. Bridge. Maybe I am. Uh, so the, between the two of you, you've seen enough makeshift bridges to know what will fall, and you start working on trying to not do that. Meanwhile, uh, Flint and and uh, uh, Invalar. Uh, yes. You guys make your way to the tavern. Um, well, it's 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 not so much the tavern as it is an inn, uh, and this is the inn that a couple of you you guys had heard about uh, uh, an inn run by a, an old shield dwarf named Morak Ugre. Uh, okay, and it, it it's fairly well known, and thus you're fairly well recognizable, and it is indeed this is the Nightstone Inn. Um, 
It's uh, there. It is. Uh, there's there's an ornate wrought iron sign bearing its name over the entrance uh, facing the town square. It's not, it's hard to miss. Mm-hmm. Um, the door is open. Um, I will. I'm not going to just like like storm right in because they're expecting invaders. So I will just reach out and knock on the door. Hello, uh, non goblins coming in. Not invaders. Um, hello? Alright, so we will... We will put you guys in the inn. Awesome. Wow. All right, so you sort of come in uh, from the south, and immediately the first thing you see is uh, the dining room. You know, there are tables, sort of broken tables and a broken uh, a, a sort of seating arrangements all over the place, and a massive boulder just in the middle of the dining room area. It looks like it came down straight through the roof and probably through the second floor as well. Um, oh, dear. Make me perception checks. Ooh. That's a 17 for me. Uh, it's all blacked out on the map, though. I don't know whether that... Oh, you are... Uh, 14. Oh, there ah, we go. Yeah. You guys are there. Uh, uh, the other two are, are... William, you're gonna have to move back to the other place to see where you're at, but for now, this is the focus. Um, so a 14, and how much did Flint make? Can I share sight with someone over there so I can actually see what's going on while I'm not in focus? Sure. We'll let you... Oh yeah, everybody has dark vision. That's why you can't see. Uh, there. You should be able to see now. Um. Well, sorry. What was the? What'd you roll? What? Seventeen. Seventeen. That's it. Okay. Um. You hear the sort of slight crumbling of the of the ceiling from where the the boulder came down, but nothing else really right now. Um, okay. And the cat, the 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 cat on your shoulder, uh, mm-hmm. Pudlar looks up. Upstairs. Okay. It appears uh, that that whoever we might find is going to be upstairs. So. Shall we? Uh, yeah, I, Flint just Flint is looking round on this level to see whether he sees anything that looks like a bar. Uh, this is this is more of an inn. Uh, they, they they have they obviously have food and drinks because there's a dining area, and you look and you see that there's uh the door sort of almost exactly opposite of how you came in, uh, which is open currently. Um, is uh, looks like it looks on into a kitchen and you can see another large boulder it looks like it's fallen through and, and actually you can see the outside because the boulder hit right on the wall and sort of collapsed part of the kitchen on itself. Oh man. Uh, Flint is gonna just step into that room quick. Alright, make a perception check. That would be a 10. Alright. You notice that the sort of so the the boulder collapsed sort of like the kitchen preparation area, where like all the like where all the food would be set out before they're making a meal and like the uh, the like the the wood burning stove and things like that. Uh, you do notice, however, that there is a cabinet just to the side of where the boulder hit. That's roughly on a human waist side waist height. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll have a wander up. Start checking the cupboards. Open up the, and like you open up this particular cabinet, and inside you just see rows and rows of bottled alcohol. Awesome. Do I see one that is like an equivalent to whiskey? Uh, you see one that matches. You actually see uh, there's a couple of spots where there are a few that have been taken out, um, and it sort of matches the bottles that you saw broken uh, on the ground in the windmill. I just quite quite loudly as uh, it. I'm just helping myself to a wee dram, but I just start 
looting You bottles. just start grabbing bottles, shoving them in your bag. Yeah. So you hear that, Quinvlar. <laughs> um, is everything all right in there? Oh, yeah, it's fine. And I take a quick swig from one of them and put it in there. Put it back in my right. pouch. And I'm going to go upstairs to check on people. So, um, give me a constitution check. With advantage, because you're a dwarf. That would be a crit, because oh, dwarf. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. This is some strong... <laughs> that would be where I crit, right? Yeah, right. Uh, it's strong. It's not, it's not nearly as strong as dwarven alcohol, but it's strong. You know, it's... Yeah. It's, it's, it's enough. I then, I then go and join him. Yeah. All right. I'm going to join Quinn Villar. Yeah. And so you guys head upstairs. Yep. Uh, and this, so uh, now you've got where basically the rooms are. Uh, as you guys come up, you see that there are four rooms. Three of the doors are wide open. Looks like the goblins actually just tore them off the hinges, uh, looting the place. Hello. And there's one door that's closed. So go check that door. Go knock on the door. Hello. Um, we. Uh, uh, rescuers. Make a perception check. That's an eight. You don't hear anything. Hello? Check the door. It's not locked. Check the door for... Okay. Open the door. You open the door. You step in? Yep. So you see, you can tell that this is the room that uh, the sort of boulder collapsed into previous from from okay from further Hold up, on. and as you step into the room, what saving throw do I need to make? Does an eighteen hit you? Yes, an eighteen hits me. All right, so a. Sure, uh, a woman, uh, a woman of uh, ind indeterminate age, primarily because you're an uh, elf and they all look the same. Right, um, of course. Uh, sort of drops from the ceiling behind you and just locks you up into a headlock, dragging you back away. Um, and she has sort of short, short blondish hair. Uh, looks very like sort of scuffed up and injured. Has very um high cheekbones with sort of a well defined face. Um, and it's just like sort of locking you up and, and looks a little wild eyed. Hello. Hello. Um, uh, I'm uh, no harm intended here. Um, here to help. Who are you? Uh, uh my name is Kinvlar Arasame. I am, um, I'm, uh, we'd come into town, me and, um, uh, my friends who were uh, elsewhere at this moment, but, um, are, are came into town, uh, largely to help with your goblin problem. Uh, we see that it has gotten much, much more severe than, than, than we had initially been led to believe we are currently dealing with them right now. Um, what is, if I may ask something, what is with, what, what? The boulders do not appear to be part of the natural town um, uh, so, uh, uh, accoutrements. Um, so, Flint, you see that Quinvalar has been locked in a headlock by this human woman. He's very calmly reacting to it. And yeah, I my head's just poked around the door. I see that she's locked him ah, up. There's a... The, that is Flint. That's one of, one, of, one of my friends. We're here to, to get, deal with the problem. I just get a, like a massive smile on my face and I just, I just say you look like a lassie after my own heart always up for the brawling do you want a wee dram and I pull out what I'm presuming is one of her bottles of whiskey <laughs> and I, I pop the cork on it well, you, you, you know that the owner of this tavern is, like, you know the owner of this tavern is a dwarf so ah right cool like this is obviously not a dwarf um looks at you Goblins let you go. Is that what ah, you think the problem you. is? Well, no, that was, let me clarify. I, I, I apologize. I was not quite able to completely explain in that moment. We had come here because we have had word of goblin problems. Clearly, with all of the, 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 the sudden, um, 
uh, uh, geographical additions to your town, the boulders. Um, uh, they're, they're, goblins don't do that, so I'm not exactly certain what that is. Yeah, well, I guess they eventually had to have somebody come. Me, she says, rubbing her forehead. No, no, the goblins weren't, I mean, they weren't really a threat, but... No, they, um, they came well, after. When she says that they weren't really a threat, Flint lifts his axe so you can see all the gory blood on it and just says, There wasn't a threat, no, but you do seem to have boulders just sprouting up from everywhere. Yes, thank you for your observation. He's so bright. <laughs> she, she, she points up to the ceiling. No. Goblins didn't do that. No, we imagine not. We were... Well, I was here. I'm a guest here, and I don't know where. Our proprietor has gone, but... Regardless of that, I was simply sitting in here, minding my own business, about to take in a night's rest, and all of a sudden, the sky went much darker than it should have been. All the starlight and everything went away. And these things, she says, indicating the broken floor and the boulder down below, started falling. I was only lucky I was sitting on my bed when it did, otherwise I might have gone with it. And you do notice that, like, her bed is, like, her bed and the window she's sitting next to is basically the only mm -hmm. bit of furniture left in the room. Everything else looks like it went down with the boulder. Well, quite lucky, uh, quite lucky that you were not, it missed you. Um, well, there are more of us, if you would like to, to come with us, safety in numbers. Um, otherwise, I would suggest you stay hidden while we determine um, exactly what's going on here. You sort of feel beeline claws digging into your shoulder a bit. Okay. And the cat is looking Relax. at her left arm. I'm following its gaze. Take a perception check. Okay. That would be a 14. Uh, so she's wearing sort of long sleeve, uh, a long sleeve outfit. Um, but you do notice that something is sort of wake, uh, slightly shifting underneath the sort of bicep of her sleeve. Looks like something might be, other than her arm, obviously, might be there. I'm. Can I get an insight check on her? Sure. That's a nine. Uh, as, She's as a Flint tough she... read, isn't she? Uh, she seems to be mostly shaken from the fact that she was almost okay. killed by a giant boulder and uh, didn't know who, what else might be coming to kill her, but other than that... Right. Okay. Has, has Flint seen this? Like, the movement or whatever? Make a perception check. Seven. No, you didn't see it. You, you didn't even realize that... You didn't even realize that Quindalar saw something. <laughs> I say, is, is, are you all right? Your arm is... What? Oh. oh, this is, and she'll like reach, she'll like pull down her, her blouse a little bit, and then a, a little small snake head will pop out. No, oh, this is just my companion. Ah, ah, okay. Um... Oh, no harm done there, then. Um, shall... As I say, would you it, would you like to stay here, or would you like to come with come with us and and uh, the safety with numbers thing? If you've driven off all the goblins, I suppose it won't be too bad to walk out with you. I mean, all that we are aware of right now. Sure. All right. And I'm sorry. What was your name? Ah, uh, Kella. Kella. Uh, I'm Kinvalar, this is Flint. Uh, this is Relix. Hello, Relix. Um, 
And we have a, 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 a couple other friends who I believe were trying to get to the keep. Um, Where are they? Yes, let's... Shall we go? Just before we leave, I ask her uh, how... Uh, uh, did goblins attack this place as well? Uh, she sort of looks up at the rafters. Um, mm. Do you follow her gaze? Yeah. yeah. You look up, you see where she had been hiding. There's like sort of the a, a goblin draped over a beam with his neck, with his head spun completely around. <laughs> well yeah. done. They tried. Yeah, I I say, I definitely a lassie after my own heart. And I, uh, I just shake her by the hand. You know, like she... I, you're, you're pretty strong, so it's easy for you to grab hand and shake. And she's just like... Mm. Uh, she returns the handshake. Um, you notice that she's got a pretty strong grip. Good. It's a monk. <laughs> um. Yeah, and uh, you guys <coughs> head back outside, out of the yep. inn, uh, and find yourselves back in the courtyard. Meanwhile, How's our progress in the bridge? Uh, you guys have gotten you're you've gotten about halfway. You've built sort of a you're you're going a little slow because it's only the two of you. Um, uh, you've got sort of a sturdy bridge halfway out to the other side. Um, and while they've been in the tavern, you guys have noticed that a a pair of uh, a couple of people have sort of leaned out to see what was happened and have approached. Uh, you see two figures armed in what you would only assume to be guard armor. They've got chainmail tabards, uh, pauldrons, and everything. Go there! Ah, what? hello! They're holding spears. Who might you be? Sfarin Altarian. Um, this is Milva. We're trying to see if there's any survivors in the keep. I assume there's at least a few. Uh, there's four of us. Most of the town fled north. Uh, well, my compatriots are trying to search the rest of the town for any other survivors. We've driven the goblins off. Uh, I'd still like to know where the catapult is they're throwing boulders from. Oi. What do you mean, catapult? I assume they'd have to have some sort of siege weaponry throwing boulders like this. They want the boulders. They came after. Where did the boulders come from, then? A uh, few nights ago... He points up into the sky. A big old castle on a cloud flew over. They started dropping boulders. Castle on a cloud. Castle yeah. on a. Cl Do I know anything? Anything at all? Make a history check. How much did you have to drink? Twelve. <laughs> Not an ounce. Um. How about that night? <laughs> Not an ounce. Lady won't, wait, lady won't allow it. Well, wouldn't allow it. Um, you're not familiar with castles on clouds. I didn't think I was, but... I not, not, um, think so. not in particular. Um, sounds kind of weird. But they I didn't don't think I was familiar at all. They, 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 they don't... Make an insight check. Rip. Am I good at insight? I am. I'm okay at insight. I have proficiency. That's fine. My wisdom isn't supreme, but nineteen. So, so yeah, the story sounds fake, but they don't seem like they're lying. They believe it. Like whether or not it's whether or not that's actually what happened, they believe what they're saying. So they they believe they have seen a castle on a cloud. Yep. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem to be here now. So um. No, no, let's... you you couldn't miss it. Let's uh, let's get this bridge rebuilt so you folk can get out of that keep. It was and maybe uh, the safer ground. <laughs> not, nowhere safer than the keep right now. Uh, no, it was it was just a big old fuck off castle, like on a cloud. <laughs> and where did it go? We didn't really stick around to find out. Well, you're here still, aren't you? Yeah, we went inside and hit. Where's the rest of the village then? He points, Villages. He points back at the, uh, the 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 keep, and um, you see 
So the keep is mostly intact, but there are several places where a couple of boulders... Like, the, you see that there are boulders sort of sprawled around it, like that, and dents in the wall, and then there are a couple of places where it just crashed right through. Um, the, the keep looks like it took up, like, wherever, where throughout the rest of this, the rest of us, throughout the rest of the town, like, one boulder might have hit one house, or maybe two, for in, in, in the case of the inn. Um, in the case of the keep, it looks like it took the brunt of the attack, and it's still standing. Um, to the question about where people are, we, we don't really know, we just know that everyone left. Well, um... We're going to try and finish this bridge and see if we can find anything, and uh, afterwards you're free to leave if you like yourself. We're just going to try and investigate. Right, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be inside. Okay. And they, they sort of turn around and go, they're, they're kind of, they're, they're obviously very not certain what to do, because when a giant cloud, when a giant castle and a giant cloud comes by and rains boulders on you, standard guards don't really have a reaction to that. So right. This is beyond their pay grade. True. Um, and so roughly about the time that they go back inside, uh, Quinn Villar and Flint and Kella uh, appear walking south from the tavern. Um, I see that... I'm I'm back to work on the bridge, so I'm not paying attention. I'm looking away from the Same. Bridge. There was uh there seemed to be quite a big hole in the floor outside the tavern. In the ground. In the ground. Yeah. Near the boulders. Yes. Uh can Flint just check out that hole in the ground? Sure. Um make a perception. Just see if there's anything in it or Yeah. Uh, uh be uh, it looks like this was just... It, it looks like there was something there. It, it's it's a hole, but it's not like a hole like from something punching through the ground. It looks like it was like the base of something that had been standing there and was removed. Mm. Something got ripped out of the ground. Yeah, I, I let the others know. I just say, Something got yanked out of the ground here! Look at it! Yeah, uh, uh, hmm... And Kella will look at it and go, "That there was a, there was a, a, a monolith, I guess you call it, a, a large obsidian structure, uh, sort of. It was sort of the centerpiece of the town. It was why it's called Nightstone. Um, really? I don't Can I get like a history roll to see if I might know anything about this? Sure. Monolith. Ah." Uh... Probably not. Eleven. Um. So you know that it was a basically a giant chunk of obsidian that okay. stood in the middle of the village square. Uh, it had, it was reported to have strange glyphs carved into it and to be magical of some kind. Um. But anything more than that couldn't really be ascertained. Like people had studied it magically, and it was it's actually uh, quite a bit of. Uh, potentially quite a bit of the reason why you came here in addition to help with hunting goblins you know this this magical monolith that no one could understand well obviously they hadn't looked at it correctly um, right you could probably determine what it was if of you had, had a chance to look at it but um you uh, you assume that it would have had to have been something very large to just pull it out of the ground or a lot of people right the goblins yeah. couldn't have done this this is more than the work of a few simple goblins. That's for certain. Uh, Flint agrees, and he's just he's rubbing his beard, and when he's been told about the monolith, uh, could he maybe have a think about whether he's heard anything else about it, with it being stone and him being a dwarf? Sure, make a, make a uh, history check with advantage. Uh, history. Uh, that would be a 16. So, you don't know anything about this particular, um, monolith, but you do know that monoliths in, or sorry, obsidian in general, in, uh, obsidian in particular, I should say, um, is pretty pretty famous for its ability to be used in magical artifacts um 
the, the, the way obsidian is volcanic glass. It's sort of made from many different aspects of the prime stuff of the material plane. And anything that pure, almost, in nature uh, tends to be very magically active uh, in regards to... In, in relation to enchanting items and making magical items. Um, so you're not sure of this one in particular, but you do know that obsidian is fairly well prized for its ability to be enchanted and, and be uh, used to incorporate new enchantments onto other weapons. Okay, he um, he turns to the to the others around him. Oh, oh is there just the one? Yeah, right now it's just, just you and Quinvalar and Keller. Uh, I just turn around to Quinvalar and I, I, I look up at him. Uh, I Flint reaches round, kind of hikes up his kilt a little bit, starts scratching his butt, uh, and uh, says, uh, I think a big magical rock got ripped out the ground here by something huge, or at yes. least something really strong. Yes, that seems to be, you seem to be accurate. Um, I feel like we should, we, we should uh, go check and see what our, what our allies have uncovered. Um, perhaps, perhaps the people in the keep can, can, can give us some further insight into this. Yeah, let's go on shot. Yeah. So yeah, uh, the, the group of you head further south and, yep. uh, you come across Milva and Fyron who are still working on that bridge. They've got about halfway finished at this point. Ah. Hello. Welcome. We're back. Ah, there you are. Uh, I've filled them in on the information that we found out. Yeah, I this see. Is, this see is Kella. Yes, this is Kella. Um, uh, she was in the in the ta- the the inn in the inn. Um, uh, and and Flint explains the obsidian yes. obelisk. I see. Uh, well, we've got a couple of guards in the keep. Came out said hello um apparently the boulders came here a while before any of the uh goblins did and according to the guards a giant castle in the sky floated out and started hailing boulders down castle in the sky castle in the cloud apparently the clouds. yeah you mean them we fluffy things yep that's a castle I, I... Yep. On those wee fluffy things. Yes. yes. That, that was my thoughts as well, but they seem thoroughly convinced. He turns uh, around, sniggering, and just says, And they think I'm thick. <laughs> I'm going to try a history roll to see if I know anything about, or Arcana maybe, which would be more appropriate. Um, whichever's better for you. All right. Arcana then. 14. So, in, in the magical realm... In, in magical studies, you often talk about creatures of magic in particular. Um, and in your studies, you would have learned quite a bit about uh, all of the the typical creatures you might encounter in Faerun. Um, one of one of the more le- less less spoken about, less talked about subjects are giants. Mm-hmm. Um, because most, for the most part, the lower ends of giants that you might run into in Faerun, the hill giants, the stone giants, aren't all that magically active. Aside from their nature, um, but the higher classes of giants, the storm giants and the cloud giants, um, are very typically refunded as very potent magical uh, spellcasters. Mm-hmm. And within that information, uh, storm giants and cloud giants, in particular, tend to live in castles that are magically attached to clouds that are particularly thick clouds. They're not, they're like, like the sort of cloud you could walk on as opposed to a normal cloud. Um, and so if you, if one were to report a castle on a cloud, it would be a storm giant's castle. Uh, that, being, so, that being said, a storm giant, well, it would be a storm giant's castle, not a cloud giant. Cloud giants are subservient to right. storm giants, and you know that. Uh, you know pretty much the hierarchy of the upper classes of giants just by being a wizard. Okay. Um, 
Storm giants are typically good creature, goodly creatures, though. They're typically lawful good. They tend to be nobility and kingly and 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 embody those those higher virtues that right. the, that the lower races also that value. So a storm it, giant wouldn't bombard a city. <laughs> yeah. So he friends a little bit. He's like, well, that. There are things that add up here, but things the but uh, so it's that would suggest giants, uh, yeah. storm giants, and and the boulders certainly would, and the 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 the, the obelisk um, uh, being pulled out uh, definitely suggests something of a storm giant stature or giant. Specific, in general stature um, that being said I don't know the, they seem like an odd group to have, have done but something like this you say giants yes um, these boulders what do the boulders look like uh, they're fairly uh, almost polished smooth like you could easily imagine them being catapult uh, ammo except that they're larger than any catapult boulder you've ever seen before uh flint you're you're kind of familiar with stonework do you think you can find anything out about where these rocks came from i can have a go uh i go up to the nearest one and i uh it'll be a I, oh, cool. it, it, whatever you do it'll be a it'll be a nature roll with advantage Natural advantage. I, I go over and I, I put my ear to the rock and I, I pull out like a little mini pickaxe. I give it a little tap. I'm listening. Crit. Uh, so these are solid granite boulders. Um, this is the kind of... This is like you would either mine this or... Now that you're thinking for a giant, might just rip it out of a mountain and mold it with their hands, depending on the giant. And it would also explain why it's so heavy. Uh, that that like a normal like like other other material other types of rocks you might be able to you might be able to lift with your strength or, or like shove over at least roll over. But granite is so dense, there's no way you could lift this. Now, you don't think you could lift it even with their help, all of you. Um, I, I relate to them all. Hmm. Now, if there's hmm. any other villages nearby, I'm asking the, the woman. Sorry, I forgot her name. Uh, Akala. Yes. Kella. Yes. Or Kella. 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 The, the nearest city would either be Dagger... Uh, 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 what's it? The name of the thing that I... Uh, Daggerdale or uh, Waterdeep. Those are the closest large cities nearby. Uh, mm -hmm. There may be some small farming communities elsewhere, but... The guard said that uh, civilians fled north. Is What's north other than the forest? Yeah, That would be I mean, water deep, wouldn't it? The are deep forest, and... That's all I know of. Well... what? Uh, what's the nearest mountain range to here? Um... Uh, you guys are sort of near the Tribor Trail at this point. Not, 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 not very near to it, but um, from, nearish. From where you are, the nearest mountain range would be the Sword Mountains to the north, past Waterdeep. Well, well, north. Well, Waterdeep is more at this point where where you are geographically. If you had continued north along the King's Road, it would you would have been there. But um, Waterdeep is now west of you. Um, so northwest, uh, northwest into the the Sword Mountains, or northeast to the Forlorn Hills, are pretty much the the mountains of choice for you. So, as of right now, these seem like mountain boulders, according to you, Flint. Right? Mm-hmm. So, all roads seem to lead north. The civilians, wherever this giant came from, uh, north wouldn't be water deep. West would be water deep. North is just the Arctic forest. Okay. Yeah, but all everything of interest seems to be somewhere north. 
Did anybody see what direction this cloud castle went in? Uh, no. Not the not the guards. We Maybe could be other people in the in the queue. Yeah, if you can help, if you can help us finish this bridge, we might be able to ask some other people who are inside. Also, uh, Quindla, would you maybe know of existence of any of other monuments like that around here at all? Mm, that is a good question. Uh, history? Yep. Uh, to 14 again. Um, I mean, there are magical artifacts uh, of a sort all over the place you know it's part of a whiz part of you know the magical worlds currently is searching frantically for artifacts uh in the wake of in the wake of the spell plague there was all manner of weird uh -huh. things left behind um nothing that jumps out at you currently uh in this particular so no area. no other no other uh obelisks nothing like that no nothing nothing that comes to mind right now okay okay Good thinking, though. Thinking next target. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see what the pe what the other people in it keep uh, have yes, to say. Yes, let's next try and, let's try and get to them. Okay. Uh, so yeah. go ahead and give me uh, intelligence checks from the rest those of you that are joining now. So Flint and uh, okay. Grimlar. That is an eleven. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, in, in short order now with the added nine. nine. In short order with the added hands, you guys managed to get a bridge across, uh, and you can very easily make your way into the keep. Uh, so now that you're at the keep, you you sort of uh, so uh, you get you get over the you get over the bridge and get into the keep, mm -hmm. um, and you find yourselves. With, uh, sort of at this guardhouse here, and inside you see that there are a couple of, uh, you see those guards that you talked to previously, as well as two others. So the two guards you, the the, the two guards that you spoke with previously were male, um, and of the ones remaining, uh, there are uh, two females as well. Um, they sort of look, sort of look you over, make sure you're just. You not goblins and you know not goblins right. in the or whatever, um, you know. And uh, one of the one of the females steps up. Ah, you must be the adventurers Torum and Kalem saw. Uh, I am Alara. Yes. I am Alara Winterspell, and she is an elf. Uh, so the all three of the other ones are humans. She's an elf. Um, Question: What uh, what what variety of elf? Uh, it looks like she's a high elf. Okay. Immediate um, racism goes yeah, in. I, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm right, uh, I, I am Alara Winterspell. These are my co uh, my colleagues, Torin Breck, Kalen Zam, and Sidiri Hamlar. Milady. Uh, Sidiri uh, Sidiri is a dark skinned, black haired uh, woman. Uh, make a history check, Quinlar. Okay. And anybody anybody, anybody else that uh, wants At to can make eight. one as well. I can make one. History. Oh. Seven. I don't know where she's from. No. <laughs> uh, does Flint want to make a history check as well? Go on then. Watch him get a natural 20. No. Uh, eight. Yeah, eight. Uh, so many of you who have traveled up and down the Sword Coast recognize that this is the type. This is this is sort of uh, from skin tone and and hair color. Looks like she might be someone from one of the islands uh, off the coast of the Sword Coast. Ah, uh, yes. Um, I'm willing to take a bet and say the same one I'm from. Uh, initially, she's a human. So. Uh, oh, oh, never mind. She's not. Uh, she, she's not. Not not that. Island Sorry, I wrong know. person. Yeah. Uh, but um. But she definitely has the look of a sailor about her, and you know, just different from the others uh, substantially. Uh, either way, uh, uh, Alara continues yeah. to speak. Uh, yeah. I, they, they. I apologize if my companions weren't able to explain a little bit how what happened. They were with our lady inside when the attack initially happened, and of only course. saw glimpses. Yes. Um. I am Thyron, Scion of, Ho Scion of House Altarian. Uh, these are my friends Kinvilar, 
uh, Milva and Flint, and our new companion. Sorry, um, didn't quite catch your name. Kella. Kella. So you turn to introduce Kella, and you notice she's not there. Oh, never mind. Can I step out to see whether she's outside? Sure. I'll step out. Uh, make a perception check. So you don't see her, but you do hear the sound of horses approaching from the west, and you can see from your angle, you can see the drawbridge lowering. Oh, no. And on that point, we're going to end for this week. So, uh, thank you all very much for joining us as we began our adventure in Storm King's Thunder. Um, this is an official D&D Adventures League stream, and we're going we're gonna to take it away, hopefully all the way through the end. Uh, we'll have... Uh, do you guys know how how long you're going to be sticking with us? I'm not sure. Hopefully for the next one, definitely. All right. Well, we we have we we'll have Dia and Grebo for at least a little bit while longer, um, uh, and uh, we have been Final Show Films. We produce a wide variety of content every day of the week. You can check out you can check out our stuff on our website at finalshowfilms.com, also on our Patreon page at patreoncom films. We appreciate all of our supporters, especially our $25 tier supporters, uh, Chris Comfort, Antonic, and uh, Cat Waterflame, without whom we wouldn't be able to do quite as much of the stuff that we do now. Uh, also, thank you to all of our subscribers here on Twitch. We are Twitch affiliates, so you can subscribe if you want to. Uh, and uh, at the end, Grebo, you guys over at Cognitive sure. Merch do some really cool stuff. Why don't you show yeah. it to the folks watching? Yeah, um, we do these. And what these are, this is one of our, our products over at the Cognitive Merchant. Um, they are all-in-one DM kits. So you, it looks like a case, and you get to help design it. You get to help kind of say what theme it is, what color it is. Uh, but then it opens up, and it is everything that you need to dm we asked lots of dms that 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 ran games for us yeah should we open it up it's kind of like this it does sit as well but we can't really show you that on camera very well <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but yeah basically we asked uh, quite a few dms of what problems they had when they were dming that didn't include players uh, and then um, we we found that you know major issues were space, dice rolling off the table when they're trying to roll behind the DM screen, the DM screen falling over, uh, and not necessarily the DM screens that they were buying have the information that they needed in their campaign. Right. So we took all that. So you've got a, a a dice, a solid dice roller and dice tray, so that you never get a cock dice. They never roll off the table. Uh, you've got three information boards that you tell us what information, what tables, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, status effects or whether it's uh, character creation things you need. Uh, and we put it all on there. Uh, you've got uh, magnetic initiative trackers. You've got a Perspex template for area of effect spells. You've got little silicone rings that are nice and soft for those people that paint their own miniatures and are very proud of them. Uh, obviously, if you are putting a marker on them to say, this one has bless or this one has X, uh, you kind of don't want to be damaging it in any way. So we've provided these little silicone rings as little markers for those spells. Uh, yeah, there's a clip to keep all your notes and your maps in. The When it all folds up, it folds up into a case that you can also carry, uh, like maybe a player's handbook and a, a DMG in as well. We made them with D&D in mind, because uh, that's mainly the game that we play. Uh, but they can be made for Numenera, they can be made for Pathfinder, uh, any kind of role-playing tabletop game. But yeah, if you, if you go on the website, it, that probably explains it a lot more succinctly than me. Fine. Uh, but yeah, check them out. They're, we think they're really cool. We're really proud of them. We're going to be having a Patreon go up within the next few days. Uh, so definitely kind of keep your eye out for that. But it's at the cognitivemerchant.co.uk. Uh, yeah. Yes. 
uh, the, the cognitive merchant.co.uk. I put a link in chat for the Twitch viewers. There's going to be a link in the show notes for the podcast, and there will be a link in the video description for you oh, watching on YouTube. Uh, so yeah, go check their stuff out. It is awesome. As a as a GM myself, and as a lover of niche things, I really want one. Uh, and I might have to bribe them for one later, but or yeah. as, as, as it's more colloquially known, paying them. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, either way, uh, it's it's really cool stuff. So go check them out. We're 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 happy they decided to join us for our openings for our adventures league. We will see yeah. you all next time. Oh wait, before we do that, I almost forgot one more thing. Four one one mania dot com is a website that does a lot of stuff that we like. Jeremy, tell everyone about four one mania dot com. So four one one mania dot com is a pop culture site that everything that geeks could be interested in, whether it's movies or television, you want to know how how the uh, <coughs> Spider Man Homecoming did at the box office this weekend, or if if you're a wrestling fan and you want to see all the coverage for for today's WWE Great Balls of Fire pay per view, oh, <laughs> that I feel stupid typing every single time. <laughs> or if you uh, all the MMA news, um, uh, video games, uh, comic books, television, music, and uh, the final show film stuff, check us out, 411mania.com. Yep, we appreciate them. We appreciate all of you for watching. And if you're on YouTube, liking and commenting below. Uh, and subscribing, too, while you're at it. Uh, but, yeah, we'll see you all next time. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Goodbye.